A new era for American cricket began in 2021. There he goes into a dive, what a catch! The rise of cricket was celebrated across the country. Now, with big wickets and even bigger hits, the stars of minor league cricket are back and better than ever. Primus got huge! Don't miss the nation's largest league competing for the biggest prize in American cricket. The Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship returns June 25th. You're watching the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship, presented by Sunoco. Welcome to the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. We're here at beautiful Morrisville, North Carolina at the site of Church Street Park where the Morrisville Raptors are set to take on the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. We're here in the middle at the side of the toss. Dame Pete has the t coin in his hand. Getting ready to flip. The call is heads. And it is tails. So the Morrisville Raptors have won the toss. Dane Pete, what have you elected to do first? Yeah, we're going to bowl first. Um, yeah. Been, been raining this this week, so we should have a look what the pitch is going to do. Um, I've heard from the local boys that it plays better under lights, so yeah, taking our chance with the ball in hand first. And l didn't get off to the brace of starts yeah. last week, right, with the big time loss in terms of a heartbreaking loss. What have your boys done to really regroup and get themselves sorted out for this week? Yeah, I think we played good cricket to be fair. We got 130 in 14 overs, which is pretty good. Um, just three overs that swung the momentum in the, the opposition's favour. We, we sat down, we had a good talk with one another, and we're ready for. Four game in front of our own, own fans. All right. Well, good luck Thank today, you. Dane. Thank you. And if I could get Najif Shah, the captain of the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers here. Najif, the coin didn't fall in your favor, but what would you, what would you have done had you all won the toss? I think I'm happy to bat first because this is a T20 cricket, and if you bat first and put a decent total on the board, then you can pressurize the other side. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Obviously, you didn't get off to the start you wanted to last week either, finishing going to heartbreaking loss against the New Jersey Stallions. How have your boys looked to regroup themselves and find themselves this big week here at Church Street Park? Yeah, that's correct. Our, our first week, I mean, is not expected results, but um, we have a good team and this is a long, long race, okay? And we need to build a unit, okay? And we are doing really good. And hopefully, we will uh, bounce back from this game very well. All right. Well, good luck today, sir. Thank and you have much. a good one. And if I could just get the mayor, Mr. TJ Colley is in the building. TJ. We have minor league cricket back in more, so how do you feel about that? We are so excited, and this community is going to support cricket throughout the year and all the way. So we're looking forward to another great season. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, TJ, and hope you enjoyed the cricket. That is the word from the middle. The Morsel Raptors, they've won the toss here at their home opener, and they've elected to bowl. Hello and welcome to the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. I'm Amun Patel here alongside Nate Hayes at Church Street Park. And as you just heard in the middle, the Morsel Raptors have won the toss and they have elected to bowl first. Nate, what do you think about that decision? Well, I think uh, the Raptors are, dis are discovering that they're more of a bowling team. And um, there are a lot of left-handed bats in this uh, Cavaliers lineup. Mooresville has some spinners, have some, has some off-break spinners. I think they're going to try to get them out for an early uh, low total and then try to take advantage of it in the chase. Not to mention this is a day-night game, so lights come on, some dew on the pitch. And right. this is a pitch that the Raptors haven't played a lot on as well as the Cavaliers, so they're just both trying to figure things out. And as we talk about spin for the Mooresville Raptors, Dane Pete, the captain, he's being brought on straight away. Yeah, we saw the strategy for winning the toss last season. All season long was bat second. Uh, when the dew comes on, the ball comes onto the bat a little bit better, a little bit better for scoring runs. So as we await the first ball here from Dane for the Morseville Raptors opening up their home account. And it was a full toss, and it was nicely put away. Again, a little bit of stunned silence here in the comp box, just not knowing what really happened there. The wind is blowing in that direction, and it was easy pickings for the Cavaliers. That's a great way they want to start out here at Church Street Park. That's the way you want to start. That ball hasn't stopped echoing yet, so uh, what a shot there. That's not how Dane would have wanted to start, but we got to think he can recover from that. 
And he does nicely on that second delivery. Hits the length a little bit better with his field. His two fielders out. He has a long on and a cow corner. So he's not going to want to loop it up too far up to these two bats. Two big time bats that come and strike the ball quite nicely. And that's the line. And that's the length you're looking for. Again, Salik Iqbal is the man in the middle. And you have the big hitting Hemraj Shenderpal at the other end. Ready to streak some carnage as well. And that one just evades the man at first slip. It might run away to the boundary. Fielder giving chase, and he's done just enough there to save a couple of runs. He's done really well there to save a couple of runs. And it was a thick outside edge. It just flew by the man at first slip. Looks like they saved just one run there. They got three, but I think they'll be happy now, maybe happy to get Hamraj on strike while Dane Pete still has some balls in the over. And the one thing going for Chunderpal Hemraj is the fact that the wind is blowing in the face of Dane Pete. So this means that if he is able to get the ball straight back down the ground, he's going to have the wind aiding him to go over the boundary. Well, just as you say that, we get a gust right in our faces <laughs> on, on the batting end. And you can see Dane trying to cramp him up for room. Just able to work at a square leg, a little bit of confusion in the middle between the two runners. And you can see the ploy here from Dane. He's going to keep it on stumps and dare you to do something different. He's invoked one edge. He's gave one loosener, but he's come back well. That time it was flighted up, and he was just able to stroke it straight back. Did hit the stumps, no deflection on it. So just able to sneak away for a quick run. Welcome back to Church Street Park here and Colin Archibald. The left arm seamer is going to come into the tack for the Morsel Raptors. Opened the bowling last week down in Florida against the Fort Lauderdale Lions and is going to continue this time bowling to the left-handed Chandra Paul Hemraj. Yeah, and we've seen uh, recently Colin was selected for Leeward Islands in the four-day uh, West Indies tournament that takes place, I think, I believe in September. So he's a high-quality player. Really settled down a little bit last week. Had a couple loose deliveries early on, but he really settled down. You can really see his, his class. Well, as he charges in for the first delivery here at Church Street Park. And that one's just worked through mid-wicket. Just going to get a quick single off of it. But again, you can see the Morsel Raptors here. Feels like they're a little bit new to the wicket, right? And obviously they are. But you can see them just kind of being a little bit more conservative, not really trying to do anything fancy. Just trying to hit the deck and see what the ball is doing off of it. Right, unfortunately, they didn't get many chances to practice out here before the season started. We had a lot of weather issues, things like that. COVID has kind of hit the team a little bit too lately. So uh, we'll see. This is a new wicket for just about everybody here. you got to think also that with the, <laughs> the fielding last, last over, it's not going to be up to Dane Pete Snuff. Uh, it's not going to be up to Snuff, Snuff for him. The not chasing with the, with the fielder on that ball where they scored three. Yeah, that was uh, something that I, I wouldn't be happy to see if I was the captain. Well, you can see Colin Archibald. He's watched a little bit of Salik Iqbal. What we've seen him do time and time again is try to take deliveries well outside the off stump and lash him over the leg side. He's left it open, daring him to go just the deep backward square leg in for him. So he's just daring him to try to do that once again. He's keeping it well outside of his arc. Can you just someone, very smart cricketer, and he understands what Iqbal wants to do. That time just went, goes back of a length, right outside the off, so I'm not giving Salik much to do with it. And keeps that slip in place, just hesitant. Salik Iqbal to run it down, just in case you're able to get it to the man at first slip. 
We were, very, we were really spared some weather today. There was some threatening uh, forecasts earlier in this, this afternoon, which would have been just terrible luck for Morrisville having that rain out last week and then having the rain shortened game. And as you know, in a rain shortened game, it's anybody's game. It just takes one guy to click, and that guy last week was Roy Silva. Ooh. Solid kickball, trying to make himself the one who clicks today, trying to go straight back over the top. But again, you see Colin Archibald keeping it well outside the off stump, daring him to go over the offside. You can see him practice it over the off stump. But two times, he's, the ball's been well out there, and he hasn't gone to that area. But as you mentioned, Nate, rain was in the forecast for a bit. It disappeared just maybe 10 minutes before the toss. But you can still feel the wind. The clouds are about... So definitely feel stormy conditions. Hopefully the rain will stay away for the Raptors' sake and for our sake. That time it was short, it was wide, and it's going to be too easy. Dane P's giving chase, and he's going to save him to be four. And that time just got a little bit too short, a little bit too wide. Allowed Salah Kickball to free his hands for two runs. Excellent slide there by Dane. He, he carried a good eight feet after hitting the ground on that one. That was a baseball slide. He might have over, overslid third base on that one if, in a baseball game. Well, as someone who's accustomed to playing on these types of grounds, these types of wickets, played a lot of cricket in South Africa, played test matches overseas for a South African international player, capped for the South African side. So he's very, he's a very great fielder, very experienced fielder, and I think he's going to find a liking to these types of grounds. Oh, no doubt. The grass. Yeah, I don't know how anybody couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Again, short this time, closer to the body, went to pull the kickball, just flies over the out, the top of the bat, and that's going to be the end of the over. And after two overs, the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers are 11 without loss. And welcome back here to Church Street Park, the site of the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. When you have our first change of bowling, just one over Dane Pete, saving himself is going to be Kieran Sutherland-Nakumar, who is new to the side. Did it not play last week, was the 12th man in the match against the Fort Lauderdale Lions. He's going to be burning in the right arm pacer. And that was short, it was outside the off stump, width was offered. And Hemraj is not going to miss out. And it's going to run away to the boundary for four. And not a lot of pace on that one either. Just felt like it's set up for Hemraj. He's not going to miss out. Cranks it away for another boundary. No, this is not what you want to see if you're if you're the Morrisville Raptors. You do not want to see Hemraj looking that, looking that easy. Yeah, again, Hemraj. Once he gets in, he's hard to get out. We saw it last week in New Jersey when he played a beautiful innings for... 62 scored a half century and again you can see the wind playing a factor with the cameras as well but again if you're Kieran you just want to pitch it up you don't want to keep it there don't let him have that kind of room outside the off stump especially if you're going to create this angle maybe let the ball do something in the air and that's a little bit better it was a little bit closer to the stumps oh well bold there and give him the room and Kieran is a big tall man runs in with a full head of steam gets some good over bounce I think he was expecting this first to bounce a little bit more but Maybe the pitch just a little bit softer than what he was expecting it to be. Just kind of set up for Hemraj. Yeah, Kieran uh, paid a lot of attention this year to his fitness. I've seen. I've noticed he uh, looks pretty, pretty fit. I mean, he always has been pretty slim and tall. And he's it on the bun with that one. Just not allowing him any room. And you can see the intensity from the Raptors in the field. That's young Rohan Farke. The under-19 player who's going to open the batting for the Raptors, presumably. And 
Again, this is a side that's going to value the field. Dane Pete, you know he's a big advocate of it. Obis Pinar, you have all these young guns about to back the youth. You're going to expect the youth to be great in the field. Yes, and my, by my count, I see that Dane has about eight bowling options in this team, too, in the field. Oh, nice one there. Beautiful. Yeah, just kept it out of the arc. Again, we've seen it time and time again. Hemorrhage trying to just do that. Iqbal trying to do it. And you can see Kieran just send a signal over to his long on saying, just be ready for it. If he gets anything to it, it's coming to you. That would hit the toe end of the bat. But you can see the plan. There's definitely a plan here for more so. They feel very prepared coming into the day. Yeah, you mentioned Rohan Faki a minute ago fielding the ball. Um, USA U19 player, one of the best fielders in the country, uh, certainly in his age group. To go two couple bounces over the rope. Unlucky boundary for Kieran. The Morsel Raptors won't mind it. But then you can see Hammer trying to work it over the leg side. Top edge just clears the man inside the circle. If you're going to have bad luck like that, you don't want it. Uh, not too bad. Not, I mean, clearly he troubled the batter there. But yeah, as I said earlier with Rohan Faki, I, I wonder if he, we're going to see his bowling today. We didn't see him last week. This wicket looks a little bit more suited to him. That one's hit up in the air. Fielder circling underneath it. He should take it. There's confusion. And is that man, Rohan Farke, with the catch. Just talked about him in the field. And Kieran Savarnakumar doing it with the ball, being brought on for his first over of the 2022 Minor League Cricket Championship. And Rohan Farke takes the catch, and there goes Thunderball Hemrods for just 10 here in the third over. Excellent stuff. Kieran's going to be very happy about that. Uh, Rohan, too. That is not an easy catch. He had he had the time to look around and make sure that nobody else was going to call him off on that before it came down. Those are much harder to catch than you think they would be. And at the end of three overs, 19 for one are the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Welcome back here to Church Street Park, and after a, a break for Dane Pete, he's back on. As you see, the new batsman, Richard Allen, come into the middle. He had a big innings last week, and I think Dane Pete's going to want to strike early. Absolutely. I think it's a good move for him to put himself back in here. A little bit of confusion between the running. They are able to get it in the end. But again, you have two left armors, and I think that's why Dane Pete has elected to bring himself back on. The spin away. And say, if you're going to slog sweep me, you're going to sweep against the spin. Excuse me, they have Salik Iqbal, the right-hander. The other left-hander was Chandrapal Hemraj, who was just dismissed by Garen Saranakumar. And again, we'll see if they continue to keep it well outside the off stump. The field set, you have a cow corner, and you have a long on for Dane Pete. And there's no protection on the offside, so if Salik Iqbal wants to go over the offside, he's more than free to do so. That was an edgy start there. It was outside the off stump. He found a thick outside edge, and they're able to save a boundary there. Save two runs. Again, the fielding has been precise here from the Raptors, and a plan keeping it away from the arc of Salik Iqbal. He elected to go over the offside, landed safely, but not the shot that he quite was looking for. Right. I think, uh, I think once again, I think the Raptors will take that right now. 
And this time you can see Iqbal just defending it, not wanting to get another outside edge. Again, the Raptors, it feels like they've had that week to really regroup, reassess their plans. They've looked very, very good to start off, and it's been Dane Pete leading from the front. That time it was set up for him. And Salah Iqbal doesn't miss out, takes it over, covers, and is going to run away for four. Not much anyone could do about it. There's no fielders in the deep on the offside. Salah Iqbal saw that it was short, able to get onto the back foot, and just lifts it over the top, four runs. And Salak is going to have to do that against Dane. He's going to have to be the one to score runs here against this bowler. Try to chase him out of the out of the power play if you can. Get him away from Hemraj. I'm sorry, get him away from Richard Allen. Just pitched the length up that time. There was some drift that you could see. This resulting in a dot ball, dot ball but again, Salak Iqbal knows he's got the runs for the over six runs. Excuse me, seven runs coming from the over with the single on the first ball. Final delivery. Comes down the track, try to use his feet, just an inside edge. It's going to end up in a dot ball to finish out the over. So after four overs, the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, they're 26 for the loss of one. He's so soft spoken. Everyone says he's so good looking. And he never forgets to call. I'm uh, born for your true self. The 2022 Tundra. Toyota. Let's go places. With on offer that time, well done by Colin Archibald to save that one from a boundary. You could see Richard Allen was thinking about leaving it for the late swing away. He said, maybe I just throw my hands at it. Archibald does a really good job here in the field. The Raptors, Nate, they've done really well to start off in the field. They've saved a couple of boundaries, and it's putting some pressure back on the Cavaliers. Yeah, that was a good stop, but Colin had faith in himself the whole way. He, <laughs> he knew what, exactly how he was going to take that ball. Another man who's played a lot of cricket. Not afraid. Back of a length again for Kieran. They go for a quick single. Again, Rowan Fudke charging in. Not going to be able to stop it. Bull to Salik in the previous over. And again, what we've seen from the Pacers is they want to keep it on the offside. We've seen Salik time and time again try to take the bullish from the offside to the leg side. So I think you're going to expect more of these deliveries if they're fuller towards the wide line. If he goes back of a length, they will be around off stump and just jam him up for room. And no fielders out on the deep on the offside, just the long off and a long on for Kieran as we're still in the power play here in the fifth over. Salik stepped over the off stump. Kieran nicely followed him, cramped him up for room, tried to run it down to third man just to find the man at short third. Very windy here. We're getting a lot of wind in our face. We had the Daphne sign blowing away. Uh, Justin, the official sign cleaner upper, had to go pick it up. <laughs> well, they're blowing everywhere, the Daphne signs. And as he makes, looks to come across the stumps again, Kieran has just been very smart. He's following him. You can see the intent from Salik Iqbal. He wants to heave it over the leg side. But Kieran, he's not budging. This is someone who's feels very high on confidence, and he's showing it right now. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I batted against Kieran one time, and his captain did not put a slip in. I don't know what he was thinking. Well, no slip in play for him today. This time, Iqbal makes a little bit more room for himself, and again, Kieran follows him, and again, no run to be had. A beautiful display. Remember, Kieran was the 12th man right. down in Fort Lauderdale, and today he's showing why he should be a part of the permanent 11. Yeah, no doubt. I'd say, you know, keep it up. Keep going. Keep giving him the ball if he's uh, performing like this. This has uh, been a very good power play so far for the Morrisville Raptors. They're going to need it. And the wind is blowing out, and you can see the camera shaking a little bit. we got a big gust of wind moving from the right to the left of your screen. You can see the leaves fluttering. 
across your camera. Again, makes room. This is up in the air. Not going to clear the 30-yard circle. Should be taken, and it is. And Kieran Severnova Kawar gets wicket number two again on the final delivery of the over. And this time it's solid kick ball that has to go. Excellent stuff, Chin Mei, with the catch there. We've been talking him up. You know, we've, we've kind of had the reverse uh, commentator's curse today. We talked up Faki, he caught a ball. We, we, we talked up uh, Kieran, he's taking two wickets. You know, we got to keep this going. Well, the Raptors are going to hope we keep this going. The Somerset Cavaliers are going to hope the tides change as we end the fifth over. 27 for the loss of two are the Somerset Cavaliers. And welcome back to the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco as we have a wide call and the first extras of the match this time from Colin Archibald who's back after a break from a one over stint. And the Morsel Raptors on top of the game at the moment. The Somerset Cavaliers are 28 for the loss of two. After five overs and the new man in the middle is Xavier Marshall. Nate, I know you've seen a lot of Xavier Marshall. What can you tell me about him? Well, X, I mean, he's, he's just nasty. He's really good. He, <laughs> he's capable of 200 scores. You know, he, he, uh, he's put up a bunch of, he, he scored a ton of runs last year. He was in top 10, top five, I think, even for in the minor league last year. Trying to prove himself, no doubt, since he's been dropped from the U.S. team. Uh, certainly has, this, has the uh, class to keep his spot. But there's a high competition. There's a lot of competition right now in that opening role uh, or in that top order role in USA cricket. Yeah, an abundance of top order batsmen for the USA cricket team. Xavier Marshall, he's a wonderful driver of the ball. Once he gets in, I, don't, I read this tweet somewhere. He drives the ball like a BMW, and I thought that was the greatest description of a drive ever. And again, once you see a couple of them, you'll get to know why someone has tweeted that guy. You'll want to get him out early, that's for sure. Every once in a while, he can dig himself into a, into a rut where you know he's scoring less than a run of ball. And that's, that's about when you want to strike. You want to get him out then. And an extra slip being brought in. You have two slips now. Again, I think they're trying to invoke that drive. And a third leave here from Xavier Marshall. And you can see some away movement. Haven't seen a lot of swing from Kieran, but from Colin, you've seen that away swing pretty consistently throughout the day as the sun is starting to peek through these cloudy skies here at Church Street Park. It's tough to tell which way the wind's blowing, to be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, it's, kinda, a great, it's a great mystery, isn't it? It's kind of just whipping around all around us. So maybe every once in a while when you see the ball move like that, you know, it could be the wind just changing direction all of a sudden. Somerset Cavaliers are going to want to change their direction. And another leave here from Xavier Marshall. He does start his innings off quite slow, but he is someone who can pick it up quite quickly once he gets his eye in. Again, in T20 cricket, dot balls are huge for the bowling side. Every dot ball is what they're looking for as you see Xavier stretching out. But we know if Xavier Marshall can stay in for 10 to 15 deliveries, he's really going to get things going. Yeah, I, 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 I think you want to get him out soon. Building up the pressure like this is a very good thing. Again, two slips in play. Archibald running in. Brings out the drive. It's just hit the short cover. They're able to sneak off a quick single. That one hit to Sanjay Stanley at cover, and Art Xavier Marshall picks up his first runs of the innings. X happy to get off strike there. And at the end of the power play, excuse me, that is not the end of the power play. The batsman kind of confused me for a minute. We still have a couple of deliveries here, two deliveries left to bowl for Colin Archibald. 
and he's going to be bowling to the left-handed Richard Allen again. Richard Allen had a good innings for them last week. Xavier Marshall, we know, can be a big player for them. So these, this partnership could be crucial if the Cavaliers are going to want to rebuild and get back into this match. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they messed you up a little bit there. I think after three, ball, three dot balls, they want to congratulate each other for the single. So that's what threw you off there. One of the great things about doing games here at Church Street Park is how many of our friends we get to see. <laughs> <laughs> that one is short ball, maybe deemed a wide. No, the umpires say no. I think that's a questionable call. I think leg side wide, definitely. Uh, but as you mentioned, fans are pouring in here at Church Street Park as we get closer to the nighttime, as we see the lights come out. You're going to see more and more of them pull out. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal to see. And one ball left here in the power play. Just a 29 run, or excuse me, a 30 run, excuse me, a two run power play. This one is full, it's straight, it's swinging away, just gonna be one. And again, one delivery left here in this power play. Excuse me, that was not a wide, so that was the end of the power play. And at the end of the power play, the Somerset Cavaliers they are 29 for the loss of two. What's up, Doug? What got into you? <laughs> At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. Fuel your best. Welcome back here to Church Street Park, site of the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. The official tournament sponsor, Daffa News. The signs have been blowing around as the wind is picking up and Dane Pete picking himself to come back on and bowl the first over after the power play. So I just talked to a fan, a couple of fans who are here for the first time, watching Cricket Live for the first time. One fella just told me that he uh, he saw the game, that the game was going to be on Willow, and he decided he was going to come over and watch it. He did. And that is a Jaffer, and that is the beauty of Church Street Park and the beauty of minor league cricket, bringing all these new faces into the game, bringing all these new fans, and really growing the sport here in the United States. We know how phenomenal of a game this is. That's why we're all watching and get these new eyes involved. It's always beautiful to see. And Dane Petey's bowling beautifully. They're going to take a quick single there. Just run down a third man, something we see Richard Allen do quite early in his innings. And we're seeing uh, cricket talked about more and more around the country, uh, thanks to people like John Boy uh, from John Boy Media. In fact, I talked to a couple before the game who said that they have been catching up on how to play cricket or how. Uh, that one looks close, Dan. We'll get back to John Boy, but I think it might have been outside the line of off stump. I think that's what Dane's going to ask him. He was looking to work it through the leg side. Ooh, what a close call there. Fires in quick, though, and he's been keeping it on stumps. I think he just might have gone outside the line, but Xavier Marshall survives. That time, though, he's thriving. That's an extra cover shot, and it's all the way. What is the boundary? It's four runs. One bounce over the boundary for four runs. Just a touch over pitched. Allowed Xavier Marshall to free his arms. We talk about how sweetly of a driver he is of the cricket ball. And he sent that one over the rope for four. That time straighter worked through the leg side. And again, a quick single taken by the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. And that is going to do it. Seven overs gone, 36 for the loss of two.
And look at the crowd at Church Street Park. Nate, you just had a word with them, so I'm going to let you go. But look at all the people flooding in here to see the match between the Raptors and the Cavaliers. Yeah, we've got people of all ages here. Um, the, the, I just talked to some folks who it was their first time at a game, first time ever at a cricket game, shot that he knows about. Um, and uh, he said he learned about cricket by watching a John Boy video explaining cricket for baseball fans, which we love to see that. John Boy's excellent. We, we love his content. We love how he's gotten into cricket. It only spells good news for us. I love that. I love the John Boy video. I also love what Xavier Marshall just did. I'm not sure if you caught it, but he used the zing veil to mark his spot. Yep. Something they do out there in the West Indies. I love seeing that. I think it's so cool when he's hitting it and sliding up. Uh, you know, most of us just use our feet. But when you have the opportunity to do it, why not just slam it in why not? to the turf wicket? I want to pull the stump out and draw the line <laughs> with the little spike on the end. Can you do that? Maybe you might be pushing it there, but it's Aditya Padala, the left arm senior, being introduced for the Raptors. Bowls the cutter straight away, the patented Aditya Padala cutter. We got to see a lot of it last year at Church Street Park. Bowls the off and leg cutters quite well, keeps it at about a length. And it's really someone who's hard to get away just because of how many variations he has. Fantastic fielder, too. Does enough of everything to, to always be in the team. Also, he's young. That helps a lot. Definitely helps a lot. Again, another off cutter there. It's worked through the leg side. There is a deep mid wicket in place. They're going to try to push for two. The throw comes in, but they only decide on one. Again, intent fielding here. Look like from X. The Raptors. Look like X slipped a little bit at the non strikers then, or else they may have. Looked a little harder at, at getting two runs there, but... Well, now we get to see the left arm of Padala to the left. Hander Richard Allen, who, again, if he gets going, gets in the groove, he's going to be hard to get out. He was a big player for them last week. Really one of the bright spots of a really dull weekend. Of course, losing that thriller to the New Jersey Stallions where Saite Dejimuku, emerging player of the week. Yes. show that we had that you know we talked about how Sadej Mukumalov made a brilliant shot there to end that match and win it and beat the Somerset Cavaliers and then again to lose in kind of a wholehearted manner in the second match he was one of the bright spots from the whole weekend yeah it's you know I believe the, I believe the game he won I believe he batted 16 overs that that innings you know he, he, he understood that everything was crumbling all around him knew he had to stay there knew they had a chance and he finished it off against Najaf on the last ball the innings. Naja probably one of the three or four most experienced bowlers in the whole country. Well, another off cutter here. Again, Naja for left armor that we'll get to see. That is the Somerset captain uh, who made me look like maybe a two foot person. Though how tall he was, I'll stay next to him. And it's been quite a while since I had to look up at a face and I had to look straight up maybe into the sky to see uh, him and uh, talk to him. So uh, we'll get to see the big tall left armor there once he comes in to bowl, but he's going to want something to bowl at. The Somerset Cavaliers trying to rebuild their innings. 37 runs on the board so far here in 7.3 overs. The projected score right now, just 98 going at a run rate of 4.9. But as we saw last week, just takes a couple of overs to change the match. That one, it was wide. It does well to get a hand on a backward point. It's going to slow it down enough for Rohan Fudke at sweep recover to save it for being won. Had that hand not gone to it, I think that's gone away to the boundary for four runs there. So great effort again from the Raptors in the field. Yep, and you probably are hearing an airplane flying overhead. That's going to be a com common sound and sight if you're at the ground. But we are right under the flight path. Nine minutes, I think, from the airport. We had a big debate about how long that was going to take last, last year. At this time, Badala bowling to Marshall. Fields it off his own bowling. And I've got the old trusty Google Maps here. And just a minute off, like eight minutes from Church Street Park officially. So that is the official timing, guys. We're not going to have that big debate brawl every single week. Eight minutes is what we've got to the airport. Uh, but it's been a brilliant over from Padala. Just not even eight runs coming from it. I got a lot of people to call now and tell that. This one slashed away through the offside just to the man at short cover. Another run there, but it's not.
वक्त आ गया है लक्ष्मी बासमती राइस को घर लाने का लक्ष्मी एक्स्ट्रा लॉन्ग बासमती राइस इसका हर दाना हो इतना लंबा पकते हुए महके और प्लेट में क्या खूब खिले हाँ मेरे घर लाने का Welcome back to Church Street Park. As we're going to see another over of Dane Pete, he's going to come in for the third over here in the ninth. Going to be bowling to Xavier Marshall. Again, Xavier Marshall hit that beautiful extra cover drive. This time much straighter. Again, work through the leg side. And they're going to push for two, I think, maybe a half-hearted effort from the man inside in Sanjay Stanley. I think it was two all the way there. But it's Aditya Padala, the good fielder that he is running, storming in. From mid, deep mid wicket to keep that to just two. Yep, we have, we have uh, more and more people piling in as the evening gets later. It tends to be the case here. We usually get more people when the lights come on. That one down the leg side. Oh, chance of a run out. Oh, wasn't able to pick it up cleanly, Sanjay Stanley, and wasn't able to clip it. I think it would have been signaled leg by. He's definitely hitting outside the line. No yeah. chance there. But Sanjay Stanley had been able to pick it up clean. Maybe would have been able to get that run out because Richard Allen was a long ways gone, was ready to go. Would have needed to be a 40-yard frozen rope to get it. But. Well, that one straight up in the air. Sanjay Stanley has a chance of redemption. Oh. Was stumbling and he's put it down. Never really seemed to get underneath it. When it's not your day, it's not your day. Sanjay Stanley puts down maybe one of the easier catches of the day. Again, it was swirling. The wind is moving it all around. You could see him stumbling. Never looked comfortable underneath the third fine leg. They invoke the slog sweep, top-edged, and unable to find the hands of Sanjay Stanley. Once you leave that that inner circle, you're kind of running downhill, down a hill like that. You know, he drop stepped and then drop stepped the other way, and then uh, his feet got a little bit tied up. And his arms hit the ground when he did, and that ball sprung free. He had it in his hands, though. And yeah, not the greatest of techniques, and he's not going to be something he wants to look at. But again, you got to have a short memory here. As Dane Pete comes back. Richard Allen finds a top edge. Is it going to carry to the field? Or he's settling. This time it's taken. Didn't get it for the first time. And this time, Kieran Severnakumar makes no mistake. Add deep backwards square leg. And Richard Allen, he's got to go. The third wicket falls for the Somerset Cavaliers. Dane Pete saying, I know what to do. That's why I brought myself back on. And he gets his first wicket. And wicket number three for the Raptors. Excellent inning so far from Dane. Way to lead from the front for him as the captain. They really needed this. This is a potent batting team. The New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, they haven't played on turf yet. Yeah, and you can see just that sweep again. Just the ball before we got in trouble sweeping. And you can see Richard Allen disappointed. But something that I really like to see from Dane Pete, when he was walking over in celebration to the huddle, Sanjay Stanley's behind him. And you can see Dane saying it's OK. Laps him, says the yeah. next one's yours, and that's very, very important. Sanjay's still a young man. Dane, right. of course, played a lot of cricket everywhere. Someone that the team is looking up to to have that kind of talk and that kind of say, Look, it's okay. That calmness from the skipper, I think, is very good for the growth of all the youngsters in the side. Well, that's one of the reasons Dane's here, to be honest. He's very good with the youth. He errs on the side of playing too many youth, putting too much confidence in his youth. Some of his critics will say, but that's what we need in this community where we've really valued the youth here in Morrisville, that the local community does. And uh, this is, he's, he's, you know, he, he, he fits the role for sure. But I, I'm also going to disagree with you a little bit. I, I don't think that, that catch that Sanjay dropped was all that easy. It was definitely one of those that's kind of right over your head. You drop step one way, then you drop step the other because it swirls. And it's just anything that's right over your head is a little bit harder than if something that's to your right or your left. Yeah, and to that point, it was swirling. I think that's where you give Sanjay that benefit of the doubt was he was settled and then it looked like it kind of moved yeah. one way or another and it's always difficult once you're moving backwards right. to take that catch and cross-footed but also illustrates the importance of getting to the ball quickly so that you can get settled so that you're not moving all those moving parts when the ball hits your hands absolutely there but no harm no foul xavier marshall survives but richard allen goes and after nine overs the new jersey somerset cavaliers they're 43 for the loss of three
tapi kalau pusing tetap. Aditya Padala coming in to Xavier Marshall. And the new man to come in is Meet Shah. Meet Shah, he is a right handed top order bat, middle order bat. He's a wicket keeper as well. Not sure if he'll keep wicket, but this is his first match in minor league cricket. Haven't seen him so far in the season. Didn't play last week, so he's making his debut in 2022 here at Church Street Park. But he's at the non strikers end. Right now, the focus on Xavier Marshall. And that's a shot. It's up in the air. Colin Archibald there, straight to him. And no mistake, tried another one of those brilliant extra cover drives. But the off cutter of Aditya Badala, and it just found the meat of Colin Archibald's hands. Was never going to make that mistake. It was straight to him. Made it look rather easy, if I do have to say so. Pretty easy, like kind of like how Obus made that ball look last week, where it just he just swallowed it. The uh, the comms, man, they were excited. It was hit very hard, and he just swallowed it. Same thing here with, with Colin Archibald. He had that track the entire way. Can of corn for him, that's what you say in baseball. Easy catch, can of corn. Well, can of corn indeed. And right now they have corn on the cob because wickets are falling in bunches. The fourth wicket to fall to, for the Somerset Cavaliers. And you're going to have two batsmen now in the middle who have not seen a ball. Mitsya, who I presume will be at the striker's end. We'll wait to see. Also have a new man in the middle as well. So things not going the way of the Somerset Cavaliers. The new man to come in is going to be Pranav Rao, the under-19. You know, very young man. He's very good with the bat as well. Someone that they've put a lot of trust in, played last week. But now it's going to be him and Meet Shah having to rebuild this innings. This is, uh, this is where the, one of the big benefits of minor league cricket comes in. Younger players coming in, there, as you can have a good look at the crowd there. Part of the crowd anyways. We have a nice big ground here. Lots of people sitting in various seats. and There's a lot of really fun places to sit here, real comfortable places to get comfortable. There's a good cloud cover right now, not a lot of sun. So it's a great day to come to the game. If you're watching at home, come out. Look at all these people having a great time. Great time indeed, and the Raptors are having a great time, and that's why the fans right now are as well. Again, four wickets down. It's going to be, looks like it's going to be Pranav Rao on strike. Xavier Marshall never left his crease. So the youngster Pranav Rao, who's known for knocking it around, he's in the middle. And just flirts with one. We see Lahiru Melanta up at the stumps. Again, if Adala's going to continue with slowers and cutters, just like he did, Melanta very good with his gloves and his with the gloves he's gonna make no mistakes there and pressure on the youngster here at the strikers end and they're looking for the single there and they're gonna get it but again another pressure single a little bit of confusion for enough thought there was one all the way meat wasn't so sure but you can see meat with the thumbs up saying okay that's good yeah, they're going to have to do that as much as they can with the score as it is right now. The situation they find themselves in, only 43 runs for, for four wickets. Now, I'd like to remind people that the beginning of the season last year here at, here at Church Street Park, probably the first, what, uh, four weekends of games here, we had an average first inning score of about 110, I believe, 100, between 105 and 110. So, and then as the season went on, the runs, the runs climbed up. Yep. So that will probably happen again this year. Again, we're hosting the minor league cricket final. By then, the runs were flowing. That one straying down the leg side, and Mitsya gets off the mark right away, looking for two. They're going to go for two. Throw comes in, and they're going to get it. Again, Pranav Rao very quick between the wickets. And this is what something we know Pranav Rao can do. We saw it last weekend when they were kind of in a bind. He would just sit in and just kind of push it around, ones right. and twos, not trying to overdo it. Would occasionally throw it a slog sweep if there were a couple of dots to come through. And Mitsha, it looks like he's not going to try to do anything fancy, as we see the former mayor of Morseville, yep. Mr. Mark Stallman over there, talking to some fans and the fans, uh, biggest, members of TCL Youth, uh, TCL as well out here. Biggest celebrity right there at the ground, <laughs> even, even tomorrow when Liam Plunkett's here. It's well, yeah. going to still be Mark. Well, Liam's going to have to definitely compete as you're going to see a dot ball there to end the over. New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, they're 46 for the loss of four after 10.
Welcome back to Church Street Park here in the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. Daffa News signs swirling around, the wind swirling around, and the bowling changes are happening quite constantly as well as we see a new bowler being introduced, another new man to Morseville. It's going to be Obis Pinar coming in, the left arm orthodox bowler coming in to bowl here. Nate, what can you tell me about Obis? Well, he's very tall. He, he hides the ball when he runs up. Watch, you'll see this here. He My favorite part hide. about his action. Yeah, Dane's doing that too. But so you just go. a dot ball there. Again, pressure in the field. Always hit the stumps, and they do not go. Again, heads up fielding, heads up play for the Morseville Raptors. And for those watching, maybe for the first time, and when you throw it in and the runner is, has got his ground when he's safe, basically, and the ball hits the stumps, the runner can keep running. The stumps are shattered. So what has to happen next? How do you get the, guy, have the runner out at that end if the stumps are already down? Well, the reason I know this, I had to learn the hard way <laughs> in a game of my own, okay? I had to learn the hard way. You have to have the ball in one hand and the stumps in the other, and you have to lift the stumps out, out of the ground. ground. Yeah, so you have to get them out by a mile, basically. This time it's pulled. It was a little bit shorter. It's just worked through mid-wicket. Fielder there, so just going to keep it to one. Not going to take two on Padala's arm. Padala with a good arm gets rid of it pretty quick, too. That's, that's half the battle, really. You want to throw it in quickly. You know, unless you have an absolute cannon, you don't want to take all this time to throw the ball in nice and slow. You want to, you want to get rid of it. Make, make them know that the ball's coming, you know? So what you're telling me, if you're not Patrick Mahomes, throw it in quick, basically. Get, is it, what, get it in. It's what's being said here for all my NFL folks watching. If you're not Abdullah Shah. This one is flighted up. It's hit straight back. Could be four. Oh, it's well done out there. The captain makes no mistake. All hands, all sliding. And look, he's leading from the front, Dane Pete. He's spicing up the crowd now. We knew he was going to have to have a big game today uh, with this team coming in here. All these left-handed batters coming into this game. We knew that Dane was going to have to uh, shine. Well, two lefties. Oh, and oh. that's missed everything. It was short and it's going to run away for four. It will. Let's see if the umpire gives it anything. No, it is buys. I thought it missed everything. Missed it looked everything. like... The batsman had just moved away from it. Lahiru was expecting it to move, and it just did a little bit more. This was an unbelievable <laughs> series of events that took place. The Somerset Cavaliers will take it. Here the Raptors won't be too mad about it, but still four nonetheless for the Cavaliers. Just bad luck there, and that's the kind of luck that the Cavaliers really need right now. But rough, rough luck. We, we you know, we, we praised uh, Lahiru's hands. He's a good, he's a good keeper. That time it's short. It's in the air. Just evades the man. At point, works it through covers, and it's over there, a sweeper. That's Jin May. Rifles it back in. But Obis still keeping that pressure on, but again, this, I think these two in the middle know they don't have to do anything fancy. Just to stroke it around for ones and twos. I don't think you should see a real big shot anywhere. And yeah, de definitely right now the goal is to stick around. Yeah, Burnoff was interested in a single, but he's turned down to end the 11th over. So at the end of 11, the Cavaliers, they're 54 for the loss of four. Airplane's not uncommon, and Aditya Padala bowling at Church Street, not uncommon. He's back for another over. Coming in to meet Shah. This one, it's flashed through the offside. Colin Archibald is there to keep it just to one. Again, quick through everything, Colin Archibald. Not going to take him on for two. No, not at all. That was a great throw. Nice and got it, got it out of his hands quick. That's what you want to do around the boundary. 
And again, Le Lehiru is keeping the pressure on these two batsmen by stepping up. Because now, if you're the batsman, you can't use your feet, especially to a guy like Badalo who gets it to dip, gets it to cut, gets it to drift a little bit. Something to look for. Look for the expansive drive. Was early on it in all accounts. Just hit through mid-wicket off an inside edge. Just going to be one. But again, runs for the Somerset Cavaliers. And just a reminder for all our folks watching, you can follow all the matches live across the 2022 minor league cricket season. You can follow minor league cricket social media or visit www.minorleaguecricket.com for more info. You love it as a commentator when the bowler gives you a little bit, few, a little few more sections to get the words out, don't you? And the dot ball there, nothing happened. You can just keep talking. Well, when you are the Morse Raptors and you're ahead of the game, you want to get through your overs quickly, and that's what you're trying to do, not allow momentum to slip back in any facet and right. keep the batsmen on their toes. Don't let them settle in, and that's what Padala's been doing. Look for a big heave back down the ground. Just going to be one out to Colin Archibald. Oh, no, he's fumbled it. A little bit of a slip there. Again, normally a sure-handed fielder. I think he's just slipped. Looked like he went for a slide. He slid too far. Hopefully he's okay, he can get up, but again, you can see him looking at the ground. Something didn't go right there. It's going to be four, not the most conventional of them, but four nonetheless. Not fun, a little bit embarrassing when you're a fielder, and that happens especially when you're a fielder as good as Colin Archibald is. But man, how about these uniforms? How about these uh, Raptors uniforms? Don't they look great? They look great with the field. The blue-green combination looks spectacular. Again, I like the waves of the green throughout the jersey. Love the stripe. It's two down the leg. I love that classic look. But you know what my favorite part is? What is your favorite part, Nate? I have a, I have a, I have a suspicion, but I'm not sure quite what it might be. I, I love the logo on the left part of the oh, chest. Gorgeous. I, I wonder why, and for those who don't know why, <laughs> our very own Nate Hayes did design the Morrisville Raptors logo. So. Uh, hats off to date. It is a great logo that he has designed and put for the team. That's an outside edge. Oh! That's down the hands. Oh, Brilliant catch that. there. Kieran Severnakumar, he's been all over it. He's put his, he shrugged his shoulders. I think he's taking it on the full. It didn't look like there was a bump to me. The umpires are going to have a word. It looked like a good catch to me from here, from where we're sitting. Bruno Rao is saying there is a bump. Again, we're waiting the umpire's decision. It looks like they're going to be content with saying not out. There is no third umpire, so whatever the umpire on the field goes with, they're going to say no. And that is the final ball, the over after 12.60 for the loss of four. says he's so good looking and he never forgets to call i'm uh, born for your true self the 2022 tundra toyota let's go places welcome back here as obis pinar comes through this one hit straight back down the ground should just be kept to one looks like it is just kept to one and again just a little bit of question of whether that was a catch or not let's take a look right i'm just taking a look at this Again, you saw the look on your live screen as you see this one pummeled through the offside. It is tight, but to me it looked like he got it cleanly. I saw, it looked like I saw skin underneath the ball. I saw his hand under the ball, I believe. Tough to tell. We have a great vantage point. Looks good to me from here. We're, we're sitting on top of the hill this year. Last year we were on the square side. This one worked again through the offside for another single. Again, these two doing well, not trying to do anything too fancy. Again, Brenna Varel given alive, given the half-life maybe, whatever you want to call it. But he's going to look to capitalize on it and just see the Somerset Cavaliers who score of 100, 105. You're very much in the game here. And that one again worked through the offside. Again, worked for a single. And the wind is still blowing. That's why you can see the camera shaking at times. It's just the wind. Is that Rohan a little bit limp over there? Who is that fielder over there on the... To me, that looks like it is Vivek Narayan who's coming. He is the leg spinner. Looks like he is walking off and signaling for a replacement. Will that be Abiram Bolasetti? Will that be Aryan Shah, who is the official 12th man for the day? 
it looks like it is going to be Murli Krishna who comes Krishna, in. So he did not make the trip down to Florida, but he's going to get his first signs of action in the field. Good field, a good arm. Right. Safe pair of hands. Uh, him and a couple of his training buddies make catches look a lot easier than they ever should be as yeah. Obis comes back into bowl. Yeah, I would imagine we'd see Morali in the team at some point this weekend. Good player. And something that is to be noted for Bruno Rao, he is someone, if it is pitched up, he will try that slog sweep if he's eaten up a couple dot balls. Don't expect it here, but just something to keep note of. That one just worked to third man. No run on offer. And that's going to do it for 13 over 63 for the loss of four. And there's a look at the match officials and company. The scores, match officials, all in the same tent. It can't have this beautiful game of cricket without those guys. Alvin Barnett, who is there in the middle. Rahul Bartwardan, who is a scorer as well. We've got great umpires in the area, too. Great umpires, great volunteers, and that's what makes Church Street Park different. It's just the all-around effort from the community that makes cricket in Morrisville so beautiful as it's worked for a single... And it nice is just going to be kept there. to one. Again, Dane makes it look so stylish, doesn't he, Nate? He does he's just sliding it. around, make it look so easy. He does. And he's yeah. always got a smile on his always face. Got a smile. Gigantic sunglasses. <laughs> the just, trick is that he does all this without the sunglasses falling off his head. And I got, I got to take lessons. The hat and the sunglasses always stay on. As soon as I take a step anywhere, my hat is flying, my sunglasses are on the floor, I'm stepping on them. I got to get lessons from Dane P. That's why he's the professional. This one's slower delivery. Again, worked straight back down the ground. This time, Colin Archibald comes to a stop before picking yeah. it up. No slips. Yeah, I think I think um, your situation, though, I think Dane's head's a lot bigger than yours, though. <laughs> you know, I think it's easier to keep a hat on, on his head than it is yours. It's not so big that it springs off of his hat head, but it's bigger than your head. That's why yours keeps falling off. <laughs> I should get smaller hats, maybe. Especially, you know? well, you cut your hair, too. Maybe <laughs> when you had all that hair, maybe it stayed on a little bit better. Well, oh. that one's up in the air. Midwicket's there. It might clear him, though, and it does. The first real signs of aggression, that from the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Ron Fudke was there. Nothing he could do about it. It's six. Sat up for Mitsha, and he wasn't going to miss out. Said, you bowled one too many, sir, and I'm going to take you over the rope. Lovely shot there. Pretty much with the wind to his back for the most part. The wind is blowing dead in our faces here at, for the time being. For the time being, indeed, we'll see if Mitya can put another one of those on the board. Tries it straight back. It's hit firmly. Archibald not going to be able to get the legs to get there, and it is going to be four. So ten runs from the past two deliveries. Aguirre's flipped for the Somerset Cavaliers. Runs flowing, and it's Mitya who has not played a match until today in the 2022 version of minor league right. who's making that big impact. Just about a 16 or 17 percent boost of run scoring in the last two balls right there. Very much needed for Somerset Cavaliers. And I'm interested to see what Padala does. We've seen him only bowl cutters pretty much all day. Does he try just one regular delivery, one quicker one? Does he go all the way full and wide? Just check what he does here. No, he's not going to change it. He's going to say you do something different. That was a touch shorter. Just work for one. And it's been good goings here for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Well, here we go, Aditya Padala. It's the end of 14 overs. The New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers are 74 for the loss of four.
Welcome back to score 76 for four. There was a six, not a four hit. As they're trying to push for two, the Padala throws are going to get it in the end. A little bit slow. It was between the two fielders. And they're able to get their first double. And again, a gear flipped for the Somerset Cavaliers. You can see more intent in the running, more intent in the shot selection, and the runs are t flowing because of it. Yeah. And we see Ovis staying, staying on. I'd like to see a little bit more boost of energy right here from, from the Raptors in the field. Well, that's a boost of energy for the Somerset Cavaliers. That's a big six. That one over Cal Corner. He just put a knee down. He slog swept it. He's taking it from outside the off stump, well across to the leg side. And Meath Shah is taking the attack to the Morsel Raptors. He's turning it on now. He had a pretty slow start, but I mean, the, the situation called for it. He was doing what his team needed, to, needed him to do, and now we're getting a chance to see what he's capable of. Yeah, and again, he was smart in the way he started out his innings. As you mentioned, just needed to tuck it around for singles, and now he's starting to take a liking and starting to hit some big shots. Maybe jam him up for room. I haven't seen him really try to free his arms when there's room, or excuse me, when it's on his legs. Maybe that might be the place to bowl. Fly it. It's hit back. Fielder there, just one bounce to him. That was Dane Pete out there in the deep, so he's just giving a little bit more flight, asking him to try to clear a low full toss. Yeah, yeah, I want to see some more chatter here from the Raptors. Be in the game a little bit more. It looks like Somerset's getting into the game big time right now. We mentioned Meet Shaw uh, just about four or five balls ago. He was at a run per ball. Now he's at 32 from 19. He's picked things up, lofted up, two for of round, no run on offer. And again, for him, he's just he's a youngster coming into the side in a pressure spot. He's just going to want to keep tucking it around. Yeah, his job right now is to get meat on strike, that's for sure. Again, flight. Really a half-hearted shot there. Just going to be safely one out to deep mid-wicket. Again, I can see Obis when he's bowling to Pranav kind of bait a slog sweep. He's giving him flight, his on stumps, and he's daring him to hit him across and test the power that he possesses. Right. So far, Pranav, he hasn't fallen for the bait. Right. I like watching the way bowlers uh, grip the ball, and this is why I love the way Obis runs up with the ball behind him. Get that a chance one. to see that. That one quicker, shorter, no run on offer. I was hit straight to the man on the circle. And definitely one of the more interesting ways he holds the ball. And that's going to do it for 15 overs, 86 for the loss of four as we head into the last five. Welcome back to the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. And we have the wish of Nate Hayes. It's Rohan Futke being introduced into the attack in the 16th over. The right arm under 19 medium pacer coming in to presumably bowl some more cutters. Definitely. We were talking about this earlier. Whether or not he would get in the game. We, we know the keeper can come up with, uh, with uh, Faki. The... Morrisville Raptors can use him a little bit like uh, Lox Park is used down there in Texas. And this is a great wicket for him, I think. And, you know, he's just a very versatile player. He can do, he can do a little bit of everything pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. I've played a lot of cricket with Rohan. And Rohan's played a lot of cricket against Brunov Rao, so he's going to know what he likes. This one is on subs. It's up in the air. Is it going to carry? No, it's going to fall. Oh! Just short. It was a big dive that was put out. And I think it's going to run away to the boundary for four. I'm not sure. Yes, it is being signaled four. You could see front of route try to do the same thing to Obis, kind of lift it. This one, it didn't quite get all of it, and it just fell short of Excellent. the man running in. Excellent effort in the field there. Yeah, no, no faults can be had through the effort. It was a diving attempt would have been low to the ground, and then Padala puts out a good slide to try to stop it, but very honest, he says his elbow hit the rope with the ball in his hand. Four runs to the Somerset Cavalier total. This time back of a length, Brunov Rao wants a single. They take the single and they get the single in the end. And it's going to be Meet Shah now on strike, who's really gotten it going. 
Right. This has been the role of front of route to get Mead on strike. Mm -hmm. Should expect to see some big shots here from Mead Shah. And we saw the diving effort in the field. One of my favorite things is to watch fielders at the boundary diving for the ball, sliding along the ground, trying to stop boundaries. And, you know, in baseball we have the, the fence. And the other day there was a center fielder who ran back to catch a ball, dove backwards, hit his head on the fence, hit his head on the fence when he landed. That can end tragically. That yeah. could end in death, you know. Cricket, we've got this nice rope. It's, it's a little bit more safe, if you ask me. Mead looking to go over the leg side. He hasn't quite gone all of this one. But Dalla makes no mistake. It was straight to him. And Rohan Funke being brought in. He does the job. The cutter, one shot too many for Meath Shah. And he has to go. It was a good flurry of boundaries. But Aditya Padala made it look ever so easy. And the fifth wicket falls for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Great stuff there. You know, we, we do talk about this stuff. We, do, we don't just show up to the game and do the game. We talk about the players. We talk about wondering what people are going to do, what the teams are going to do. And we did talk an awful lot about whether or not Fatki was going to get the ball today. And it looks to be a great move to bring him on with the ball. And again, he's delivered on all occasions. Very versatile player. Expect to see him open the batting for the Raptors as well. And that is going to bring in to the middle Umed Asif. Big, tall man who's going to bowl some left arm pace. And when we mean pace, we mean pace. Uh, but he's going to be brought into bat. Nate, you were talking about him earlier to me. I'm going to let yeah. you talk about him to the folks. What can you tell me about number 18 there? Well, I can tell you that uh, New Jersey's not unhappy to have him in the middle right now at this particular point in the game. He's played the, in the Pakistan Super League. He's got over 100 games of T20 experience behind him, a strike strike rate of in the, in the 140s. Batting average over 13. He's a, he, he in in the PSL. He comes in late and he just he just tries to hit big, and he you know he he, he wins he wins games that way sometimes. But he's a he's a good bowler too. That's his primary role is the right arm fast medium bowler. Uh, gets good bounce. Loves that back of length right in the armpit rib region that nobody wants to <laughs> face. But let's see what he does today. He's got long long levers. A big cricket term. Long levers for everybody who's new to cricket. You're gonna hear that one a lot. It's one of our cliches. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he, he can really whack the ball. Loves to hit it straight back down the ground. Well, right now with Brunov Rao on strike, and it's Farke bowling. That one swung a little bit. It's worked out to the offside. Archibald should keep it to maybe just one. They are going to get two quick running from the two men in the middle. Probably two all the way. Had to move out well to his left and put a throw on. And Brunov Rao will retain strike for the last ball of the 16th over. Yeah, we mentioned... Uh, Made's a height, very tall, six foot five, and you would think maybe he'd be slow afoot. He didn't look too slow to me there. Now moving quite quickly, that one aerial for a moment, but he split the gap there. Sanjay Stanley able to track it down as the lights come on here at Church Street Park. Another two runs that the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers get, so they end the over with four runs, but the big wicket of Meet Shah falls. 95 for the loss of five now are the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. What got into you? <laughs> At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. Fuel your best. And welcome back here to Church Street Park as we're going to see our first look at Umed Asif in minor league cricket. He's a big tall man. Looks like he's going to have a big tall man be bowling to him in Giran Severna Kumar. Again, you can catch all the action here for the July weekend for minor league cricket on the YouTube page on Willow. Plenty of places to go. Would not be possible without our sponsors Toyota, Sunoco, and Dapa News. And news out from Houston. And we'll get to that news after this delivery as Kiran comes in to Umay Dasif. Oh, and nearly chops it on. A little bit too close to run it down, but they are able to get a single. Nate, what's the news you have for me? Well, we have our first century in minor league uh, 2022 in the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco, I should say. Um, 
very first century. We had four in the 90s last week. Now we have finally one century, and it's Michigan, a batsman, Nauman, or Newman Anwar. Numan Anwar, sorry about the pronunciation there. We'll get, we'll get all this down someday. Uh, but Numan Anwar scoring the first century of minor league cricket. He scored 114 runs, so congratulations to him. Congratulations indeed, and again, a lot of cricket coming your way here over these next four days. But right now it's Kieran coming in, Dupran of Rao. Keeps it wide, it's slashed, over covers. It might run away for four, no, just going to be kept to one. It's Murli Krishna Ankaraju out there. It's going to be kept to two. But again, Pranav Rao starting to pick things up. You can see him settle in. And again, a lot of cricket going away. There's matches in Houston at Musa Stadium. I was there just a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful facility, Prairie View. Everyone raves about that area. And again, here at Church Street Park, I think in our minds, the most beautiful park in all of the USA. This one again, cut through covers. Again, Ankaraju has to work along. And he's able to keep that one to just one this time. So it's going to keep Asif on strike. Yeah, I, mean, I mentioned uh, Numan Anwar. With the, he's, still, he's actually still in the game. He's got 119 runs against Lone Star Athletics. Actually, no, sorry, he finished not out. It was, uh, that was not out after 20 overs. Michigan Cricket Stars posted 214 for three. <laughs> That's excellent for them. They lost some, uh, some, some good players this year, but uh, see what Ryan Scott did. Ryan Scott was out for 18 runs off of 14 balls. Ryan Scott earning his way onto the U.S. team against Ireland last year thanks to his excellent performance in, MLC, in minor league. Well, there's a shot there, powerful off the bat, but it's just one bounce to Obis Pinar, not going to make any mistake about it, but you can see the big power. Ryan Scott, as you mentioned, scored centuries last year, had two of them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but again, a lot of talent around minor league cricket, a lot of players who are going to emerge. We've seen Vatsov Agala make a name for himself in minor league cricket, earning his way to a USA squad. Um, and just the names go on, Rahul Jariwala, Saiteji Mukamala, plenty of names to go on and on and on. And that's the beauty of minor league cricket. This time looking to heave it over covers. It was Fuller, unable to do so. Just found a need that brings up the 100 for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers here in the 17th over. So they've really brought things up. You're looking at 120s, a score that's very much possible with the way these two are going about their business. One name I forgot to mention uh, being brought up to the USA squad. Who can forget the Kane train, Marty Kane, right. uh, part of the T20 squad for the USA. Absolutely. Uh, San Diego Surfriders captain. It's definitely like a kind of a spiritual leader too in some ways. Oh, that one is slapped. It's up in the air though. I don't think he's quite got all of it. He sliced oh, it and this right time back. running back, Sanjay Stanley I believe is the man there. Yeah, it's Sanjay. He's, he makes amends for the catch he dropped. You can see he comes out with huge, huge excitement after that catch. Again, someone who's usually more calm, reserved in nature, but after the blunder he had earlier today, makes no mistake that time. Running backwards, never easy. The lights are on, sun's going down. No mistake being made. Yeah, and that's who made out. We saw his the single he hit to mid deep mid wicket looked looked pretty uh, looked like he can hit the ball clean. So that was excellent. We were just talking about it whilst uh, we were having this little break. Here in Silver Nukumar has bought three overs. He's given up 15 runs and taken three wickets. The thing about all three wickets, they've come on the last ball of each of his overs. So he's making us work for words quickly. But he's <laughs> been delivering right at the end and taking all the life out of the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. No doubt he's taken some big ones too. It's been uh, excellent to see this performance from him. He took out the first two. He took out both of the openers, including Hamraj, and then he takes out. Asif here 
in at what was that the 17th over there yeah yep. 17th over goes and you just have 101 on the board so runs on the board but wickets falling and the new man in is Walid Karimullah so he is in the middle now he is a man on strike and it's Colin Archibald is coming in to bowl the left armor usually comes in a couple overs early and a couple overs late you're gonna see him start his late spell now And on the button from ball one, they're able to get a single though through the covers. And you can see the change in the field. They're bringing in the long on fielder and sending back a fine leg. So maybe the short ball tactic comes out here that he's going to hit the deck here and dare young Pranav Rao to pull him over the leg side. Yeah, let's see. You know, or maybe in international cricket, we see a lot of times that the two straight fielders will be in for the Yorker deliveries and that you'll have a sure, fine leg back. Sure. So, two different types of approaches. Be interesting to see which one they go with. Going to see a triple bluff, I bet. <laughs> and he does hit the deck hard and he's just worked at the point nicely for an overall. Again, he's not been rattled. And honestly, something I've been impressed with with youth around the country is anytime they bring brought in and called upon, none of them seem rattled. Side Deji Mukamala last week, Rahul right. Well, anytime he comes in. Well, you know, I, I have a kind of a theory about that. Uh, they're playing cricket all the time. Like these guys, these kids play cricket all year round, and there's some pros and cons to that. You know, I know talking to Burke Cockley, the USA strength and conditioning coach, he thinks that, they, and I kind of agree with him that, that the youth around in around this country play a little too much cricket. But I think maybe it does kind of help them in in regards to. Here we go. Let's see, are they going to go for two here? Nope, they're not going to go for two. But yeah, maybe it does help them a little bit. Um, it, emotionally speaking, prepare themselves for these difficult spots because they're always playing. You know, they always have. You know, maybe it's maybe apathy sets in. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, cricket is cricket at the end of the day, and um, you know, I think that all these guys they play a lot of cricket, practice a lot. Um, you know, part of the youth program for a little bit myself, and again, you're practicing basically every single day. You have bowling sessions, batting sessions, you have fielding sessions, and you have sessions with the overall team. And right. that's why all these players, like you said, are in it. And they always feel like they're, they're just playing another game of cricket. And I think for Pranav Rao, he gets to play at Church Street Park. And he's played at Church Street yeah. Park a couple of times before. It's nothing new. It's just you're playing the same game right. with a couple of different people. That's all. Exactly. And they're playing at Church Street Park without pulling their hamstring or groin, which is something <laughs> I can't say. Every time I play here, pull a hamstring or a groin because I'm not used to the metal spikes, you know. Oh, the advantages of youth, I would say, Nate. This time around the wicket, Pranav Rao shows off a nice cover drive. It's going to be a couple of bounces to the fielder. They're just going to keep it to one, though. So now we're going to get to see more of Walid in the middle. Yeah, I think it's the youth, you said, and I think part of it's also skill. You know, ability. <laughs> <laughs> I think that plays a big role. And again, you can see the crowd coming in, parents coming in with their fans, all the kids running around. Uh, it's just it's brilliant to see all the support that the Morsel Raptors are getting and all the support we have for cricket right. around the community here. And College Archibald, Colin Archibald is loving it as he storms in to Karimullah. Full straight. It's worked the leg side. They're going to push for two as it's in the gap. They're going to try to. Padala throws in, fires. And a one-handed stop there from Archibald, which is nothing. impressive to my eyes. But yeah, nothing able to get new. To in the nothing end. new. He's like, ah, I can do this. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, in his sleep. He just it's something he does all the time. So, yeah, you're talking about how great this ground is. I love this ground. We talk about it all the time. There are some grounds up and coming around the country. Musa, for example, just hosted the Cricket World Cup League 2, which you, Amon, you were down there doing commentary for something about, you know, a couple thousand consecutive overs down there at Musa Stadium. Enough to be deemed a wide. It's definitely legal. Uh, yeah, felt like we uh, talked a lot over there. <laughs> Me and Peter De La Pena were on for about 400 overs. That's going to do it. 418 overs, however, 107 for the loss of six. Took that last corner pretty quick. Sir, I need one hand on the roof, one hand on the pump. Time out for Sunoco Go Rewards. Keep pumping. With new Sunoco Go Rewards, when you fuel, you save because words come first.
Gear and Severno Kumar in. It was full straight. Bruno Varela lost track of where that ball was going. Nearly run out there in one of the most brutal of fashions. Talking about a great grounds, Musa Stadium, as you mentioned, Church Street Park. Yeah. Uh, you know, plenty of them across the country. And you've been to a lot of them, Nate. Uh, you know, out west, they have a couple of big ones as well. Can you talk about those for us? Yeah, I've been I've been to Morgan Hill. I think that's an up and coming ground. Uh, they've got they've got a turf wicket over there. They also have a hybrid wicket. I think these hybrid wickets are going to be excellent, especially in the northeast if they ever get introduced up there. Well, that one is definitely a no ball, Kieran. It was dipping, but it definitely hit him around the rib area. Again, he bowls one more of those, and he's gone. But it's a free hit for. Karimula. He's going to get the opportunity to kind of free his arms and hit the ball as hard as he wants to, right, which right. for a tall, lanky man like himself, the term you were talking about, long levers, he's going to get to use them uh, right now. Yeah, so we've got long levers versus long levers <laughs> <laughs> with Kieran. And uh, yeah, so we, we would like to take, the, take a moment to, to thank the grounds, the grounds crew here, headed up by, uh, by Patrick, the curator here at Church Street Park, and obviously Jerry too. Jerry plays a big role in maintaining this ground and you know maintaining the whole grounds around the country around the sorry around this the city this one is going to be wide so the no ball continues Managing. try to keep it away from the long yeah. levers of Karimula and now he's got to re-bowl it more actions coming Kieran he's been so sharp just kind of a little bit rattled now after that no ball yeah so the no ball stays due to the game you ball and no ball you get a run penalty and the batter gets a free hit where he can't get out unless he's run out. Well, here we go. Can't get caught out, and that's a shot and a half. Just the freedom he needed, the license he needed to clear his arms. A well Great done shot. out in the field. Aditya Padala showing off there. Brilliant stuff to keep it to two. It was a couple bounces that felt like it was going over the rope over a vacant region of the ground. Sun in his eyes, too. Sun in his eyes, and he makes a great play at the battery to save a couple of runs. And he's got no hat, no sunglasses on. He's just all hand-eye coordination. And now, Kieran gets the ball with some legal deliveries. He escapes the no ball with three runs against him. One from the wide and two from that from that double there. And Kieran, he gets better as his overs go. We've seen him improve the, the, each delivery. We'll see if he can continue to do so. If he's going to try another slower one, that's what he was going for when he bowled the no ball. This one has hit the deck hard. It's been flashed and he's going to couple, go a couple of bounces over the rope for four. Went short, went wide. A lot of risk involved there with no deep point or yep. deep third. He tried to invoke short third, but it just flew over him with his pace. Not the greatest of deliveries there from Kieran. And four more, and the runs are flowing now for Somerset. Right. Sometimes batter miss hits, and it's because the bowler bowled a good ball. That one was not a good ball. That was going to be runs no matter what he did with it, as long as he got his bat on it, based on the field that they had. And yeah, that was just not a good ball for the, for the field that they had. Again, you can see him intentionally trying to keep it away from the levers, keep it away from his strike zone by going short and going wide. This one's in the strike zone, though. It's up in the air. Dane Pete's underneath it. No mistakes from Dane. The captain took it quite low to him. I'm not sure where exactly he wanted it. You can see saying, calm down, calm down. Gearin strikes again late in his over. Gets wicket number four and over number four. And now you get to see Karan Mula go. Kieran Savanukumar strikes back after giving up a boundary. Excellent stuff here from Kieran. Way to go. I mean, making a believer out of all of us right here. Uh, earn, definitely earning himself some more games with this performance. Absolutely earning himself more games. Again, was not part of the team last week. Was the 12th man last week. I think flew in to RDU last night. I remember from his Instagram stories, it was 16 hours ago when I looked at it at 3 p.m. So I believe that's yesterday, but my math is a little bit okay. Uh, so he flew in late last night. He's come in and made a big impact on the game here. And it's been impressive to see what he's done. And again, keeping wickets falling at one end and building pressure for all the other bowlers. As we see the new man coming into the middle is Najaf Shah, the captain number 12. Another big, tall man alongside Bruno Rao. The wind blowing. That's why the cameras are rattling. But Kieran, he gets two balls now. Again, history says he's going to take one on the final delivery, but he's got Bruno Rao on strike. Bruno looks to do something creative. He followed him all the way through. Lahiru does well to keep that one, and it hit just the tips of his fingers. Again, sharp with the gloves, sharp with the gloves indeed. Yeah, a little bit of early movement there by the batter. I think he gave that away a little bit too much. I'm going to go ahead and credit Kieran. For that, for following him. <laughs> yeah, did well. He's like, earned that. He's earned that. The benefit of doubt, hasn't he? 
Absolutely, again, in front of our early movement, was looking just to scoop him over. Even then, you still have the fine leg in place. I'm not sure that shot is a scoring shot. This time comes down the track, top edges it, but it's going to go over third man again and for four more. A little bit unlucky there for Garen Severn Kumar. That one is all right. We talked about good balls sometimes going for boundaries. Right. That was one of them. Four runs to end the over. And at the end of 19, 120 runs come up for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Lakshmi extra long basmati rice. Iska har dana ho itna lamba, pakte huye mehke, aur plate pe kya khub khile. Ha, mere ghar lane ka. Welcome back to Church Street Park as we head to the final over here for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers in the opening match at Church Street Park here in the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco with the official tournament sponsor being Daffa News. We're going to see Najef Shah, the captain, the skipper on strike. The left-handed pace bowler is going to finish it facing the left-handed pace bowler of Colin Archibald. Archibald storms in. First ball to final over. Follows him. Always heated over the leg side. Fielders coming underneath it. Falls just short. They're going to push for two, and they're just going to get two from it. But a, a decent-looking shot there from Najib Shah. Look comfortable under that one. Yeah, not bad. I, you know, I mean, sometimes you just get unlucky because uh, fielders couldn't get to it. Just dropped in between everybody. A little bit short. Yeah, there is a gap at mid-wicket. They have a cow corner and a backward square leg, so he's opening and telling the batsman, play across and open up your stumps. Najib yeah. Shah said, I will do that. As you see the fans here as the sun's setting over beautiful Church Street Park. It's yeah. cooler now. The lights are out. And it's a beautiful scene for a final over, don't you think, Nate? Absolutely. And just to catch up a little bit around the league, the Chicago Blasters ended their innings 130 all out. Well, this one again worked through mid-wicket. Fielders is there. Oh, he's just fumbled it out there. I think it is Jinmei out in the deep. He's going to allow two and probably was going to be two all the way anyway. And now they are going to make a switch, bring Jinmei into the infield. Again, you want your best fielders in the best spots. You want the, field, the fielding spot that suits that type of player. So if that player is very good at quick catches, you're going to want him in short. If that player has a big arm, you want him out in the deep. And that's why they're making these strategic changes. Again, I think the Raptors would be happy to have Najib Shah play out all this over. This time it's short, it's worked behind square, no fielder going to be there, just straying in line that time, Colin. There's a little bit of early movement, try to follow him. Najib Shah just helps it along its way, and I believe that's six to the Somerset Cavaliers. Great shot there by Shaw. You know, I think I might try to go for a little bit of a wide Yorker here on him. He's definitely shown the ability to hit the ball when you put it there. Yeah, again, mid-wicket was open. It looked like he was trying to attack the stumps. And I think you're right. I think they might try to do something like that and keep it away now from the levers, make him play anywhere else along the ground. Again, you can see him change the angle as well. Instead of coming left arm over, he's coming left arm around to a left-hander. So he's right. trying to definitely go trying to push him across and yeah. not allow him to just go with the angle. And when you change your angle, when you know you're going to change your run-up, you got to change the angle of the field a little bit. All these things work together. It's all a big strategy to this. It's not just throw it up and let him hit it. Well, here we go, Colin Archibald. Oh, oh, he's cleaned him up. He went for the Yorker, thought he might go wide, but he's gone straight. The angle undoes Najib Shah. You see the zing bells. It lights everything up. 
and Najib Shah, the captain, has to go. And Archibald gets wicket number one and maybe the prettiest wicket we've seen all day. Gorgeous. That's going to make the highlight reel for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. How many times you see a toe-crushing Yorker like that? Straight on middle stump. The zing bales light up as the sun is setting. Everything being so beautiful right now for the Morsel Raptors. Somerset Cavaliers, though, they're at 130 with two balls to go, eight wickets down. Right. 130 is a big score. Remember, Church Street Park last year in the first innings early on, 105 to 115. You saw scores defended in that range. We know the dude's going to play a factor. Yep. But right. 130's runs on the board. Runs on the board. Yeah, that's always going to be pressure uh, at this ground, especially this time of the year. Uh, but let's catch up a little bit. Let's take this time to catch up a little bit on the Michigan Cricket Stars versus Lone Star Athletics game. Cricket Stars posted... 214 for three in their first overs. Uh, Numan Anwar, uh, 119 runs from 63 balls. Zishan Maksud, 41 from 22. And now Lone Star is on trying to chase. At the end of five overs, they have 46 runs. And Hamsa Bangash smashing it around, 36 runs from 16 balls. Good for him. Well, everyone's smashing it around, and the Cavaliers are going to hope it's Damian Jacobs who smashes it around next. He's the new man in the middle. Colin Archibald is going to remain left arm over for the right-hander again, creating that angle. He's changing up the field, bringing in the deep backward square leg and bringing a more conventional deep mid-wicket. Is it a Yorker that he's looking for? It is. And it's been an interesting shot played there. He looked to scoop it over. It hit the legs of the bat. I think it's going to be given as leg buys. No, maybe an inside edge onto the legs, but nonetheless, it is one, and there's going to be front of Rao to face the final delivery. Front of Rao right now, 26 runs from 27 balls, two fours. He's going to hope for another one right here. Yeah, he's been a real big part of why this Somerset team is able to do what they do. Uh, they were able to rebuild with Misha, him and Misha. Misha hit a couple of big ones. Front of Rao helped out, but now we're on the final delivery with Archibald. Full straight, work down through covers, just a short cover, and it's just going to be one to do it. So at the end of 20 overs, the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers finish with 132. Nate, is that going to be enough? We'll see. Stay tuned and find out. Well, it was a big, uh, big innings from both sides. You had a brilliant start for the Morso Raptors with Kieran Severna Kumar. Uh, picking up two wickets, picking up both openers in Salik Iqbal for 15 and Chandrapal Hemraj for 10. Richard Allen was undone by Dane Pete for just four. And then you had Xavier Marshall undone the over later. Aditya Padala gets him 13 off of 19. It's Meet Shah in front of Rao who are able to build a partnership up for a little bit. But Rohan Fudke to Aditya Padala, that was the combination. 33, Meet Shah goes for the highest score for the Somerset Cavaliers. Front of Rao remains not out on the day, 27 off of 28. Umed Asif was undone by Kiran Savarna Kumar, and so was Walid Karim Ullah. Uh, Umed Asif not able to show off his big hitting prowess. Just two runs to his name. Walid had 10. Najib Shah was undone with a beautiful Yorker by Colin Archibald for 10 runs. And that means the Morsel Raptors will need 133 in their 20 overs. Nate, it was a brilliant first innings. We'll see you all back here for the second innings as we head out here at Church Street Park. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be an exciting evening of Cricket in Store. Absolutely, you got to see Church Street under the lights. Under the lights, and we'll see you guys right here for the second innings. That time, though, he's thriving. That's an extra cover shot, and it's all the way. What is the boundary? It's four runs. One bounce over the boundary for four runs. It'd be a 40-yard frozen rope to get it. But. Well, that one straight up in the air. Sanjay Stanley has a chance of redemption. Oh. Was stumbling, and he's put it down. As Dane Pete comes back. Richard Allen finds a top edge. Is it going to carry to the field? Or he's settling. This time it's taken. Didn't get it for the first time. And right now the focus on Xavier Marshall. And that's the shot. It's up in the air. Colin Archibald there. Straight to him. And no mistake. Tried enough. NFL folks watching. If you're not Abdullah Shah. This one is flighted up. It's hit straight back. Could be four. Oh, it's well done out there. The captain makes no mistake. Well, two away for four. It will. Let's see. And that's what Padala has been doing. Look for a big heave back down the 
ground. Just going to be one out to Colin Archibald. Oh, no, he's fumbled it. A little bit of a slip. It is a great logo that he has designed and put for the team. That's an outside edge. Oh, that's oh, on the hands. Oh, Brilliant catch. Bad. Well, that one's up in the air. Midwicket's there. Might clear him, though, and it does. The first real signs of aggression. That from those on the board. Tries it straight back. It's hit firmly. Archibald not going to be able to get the legs to get there, and it is going to be four. I'd like so, to see a little bit more boost of energy right here from, from the Raptors in the field. Well, that's a boost of energy for the Somerset Cavaliers. That's a big six. He likes. This one, it's on subs. It's up in the air. Is it going to care? No, it's going to fall oh. just short. It was a big dive that was put it's, out. It's a little bit more safe, if you ask me. Meat looking to go over the leg side. He hasn't quite gone all of this one. But Dalla makes no mistake. It was straight to him. Kind of a spiritual leader, too, in some ways. Oh, that one is slapped. It's up in the air, though. I don't think he's quite got all of it. He sliced oh, it. And this right time, back. running back, Sanjay. Going for when he bowled the no ball. This one has hit the deck hard. It's been flashed and it's going to go a couple of bounces over the rope for four. Going short and going wide. This one's in the strike zone, though. It's up in the air. Dane Pizza underneath it. No mistakes from Dane. The captain took it quite low to him. I'm not sure where exactly he wants. A scoring shot. This time comes down the track. Top edges it, but it's going to go over third man again and for four more. A little bit unlucky there for Garen Seven. All this over. This time it's short, it's worked behind square. No fielder gonna be there, just straying in line that time, Colin. Well, here we go, Colin Archibald. Oh, oh he's cleaned him up. He went for the Yorker, thought he might go wide, but he's gone straight the angle. You're watching the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship. Presented by Sunoco. हम हम टीसीएल के लिए थोड़ी काम कर रहे हैं हम विलो के लिए और एमएलसी के लिए
Welcome back to the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. We're here at Church Street Park for the second innings between the Morsel Raptors and the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. The Morsel Raptors are all set to chase 133 in their 20 overs. They've sent out Lahiru Malanta, the wicketkeeper, and the young under-19 Rohan Farke at the other end to open out their batting account. And the captain of the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, Najaf Shah, has brought on himself... Given himself a slip as well. He does bring it away from the left-hander. It'll be interesting to see this matchup here. Lefty v. Lefty as the Somerset Cavaliers are going to hope to get off to a good start. And a no ball to start us off. So not the start you're quite looking for if you're not Jeff Shaw. There is movement on offer. You saw it kind of square up. Lahiru Malanta. But big, it's going to be a no ball and a free hit to an already aggressive bat in Lahiru right. Malanta. Big, big favor there that he just did for Lahiru. Uh, obviously, these bowlers on the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, high-quality bowlers at the top. And, you know, so you've given... But the gap, oh, no, it's well done by Umeida Asif to keep that one to just one. It looked like a certain bound. I'd love to have that no ball. And now he's got one of his own. So well, let's see what he can do with it. What he can learn here. And Rowan Fudke does get onto the back foot quite quickly. So if he was wanting to pull, he is someone who, if he can get onto the back foot, which we've seen him defeat the no ball. And finally, we have a legal delivery. So the first ball, while it was a perfect Yorker, went for three runs. Especially with that angle. We've seen this angle in international cricket be such a problem. We see it in associate cricket be a problem. And we'll continue to see it be a problem. Left-hander over the wicket to the right-hander, swinging back into him. Always break there. Very good ball. <laughs> get those three runs look a little bit, a little bit better. Rohan was trying to make sure he didn't get LBW this time. Swing here from Najif Shah. Yeah, they're going to need it. You know, you don't want to lose a whole lot of wickets in the pocket. There are limited only two fielders outside of that circle, that 30-yard circle uh, around the pitch, around the wicket. And... So you, you don't want to lose a lot of wickets early in the game. They're, they're worth more uh, for the bowling team. You know, it's you want to save them up for the end. This one again full and straight. And you can see Jinmei look up and towards third man, expecting it to come off of the ground or off of an edge maybe. And it just was right down at his toes. Najaf Shah, he said, I'm going to go and I'm going to bowl Yorkers. You right. see me out with my swing. Yeah, this is, this is no slouch of a bowling attack. And it's gotten even a little bit strong. Well, you might argue it's gotten stronger. Uh, I believe it has from last year. It was good enough to hold the New Jersey Stallions, Stallions the Atlantic champions. It was good enough to hold them to very meager scores uh, last weekend. And so let's see if the Raptors can overcome. This time comes in, again it's swinging in, and again Jinmei looks up in the sky expecting it to be fluttering around. It's just come off an inside edge. And again, it's been a quality over, apart from the two no balls. You talk about wickets in the power play. We saw for the Morsel Raptors, they took two in the power play. Both were Kiran and Savarna Kumar. Already won here in the first over for the Cavaliers. So, on a ground where 150 was chasing in the league games, these teams are able to chase 150 here. You're thinking these early wickets are going to be huge for the Cavaliers to give themselves a fighting chance, especially with the ease of 150 being chased. Right. Yeah, it's, it's the earlier you take a wicket, the, the more runs it saves your team as a, as a bowling side. This one again full, again straight, again swinging, and just evades off stump. Najaf Shah not sure how that one missed. And you can see him walking back with that meek smile on his face. He knows he's putting absolute dots out there in the middle. And he's making life so difficult. Big smiles all around, though. This has been a long over if you're the Raptors. This has, <laughs> this has seemed like it's been going on for about 15 minutes. And I'm not sure the next over is going to be any shorter, Nate, because we talk about Umay Dasif. We'll get to him later. But right now, all the focus is on Najaf Shah. He's bowling outstandingly well again. Two no balls to start it. Four balls delivered. Three runs given up. But the wicket of Rohan Fudke to start us off on the first legal delivery. And Chinmay has not looked very comfortable either. Big appeal, and he's given. It was on the back foot. He was close to the stumps, wasn't missing. He was on leg stump, never moved across. But it doesn't matter. The umpire's call goes, and Chinmay has to walk in wicked number two falls for Najib Shah. The swing back into the right-hander. 
proving to be the weakness and the downfall of the Morsa Raptors at the moment. Three for the loss of two with still a ball to go in the first over. Rough, rough start for here from the Morrisville Raptors, and it looks like Obus Pinar is coming in. And he's used to saving the game for his team. He played last year for St. Louis. Not, not the deepest team. Great crowd following, though. Great, uh, great community down there. But he, uh, he definitely had to save their butt a few times. He, he he's almost single-handedly defeated uh, Houston last year in a memorable finish on the last ball when you saw all the fans in St. Louis rushing onto the field. And we're, we're going to need a good, good performance from him today for the Raptors to uh, have a chance to chase this down. Well, my apologies. It looked like to be the final delivery of that over. So we we're going to do it. That was three overs gone in the first, uh, excuse me, three runs gone in the first over for two wickets. So welcome back as the Morsel Raptors struggling. One over gone, three runs on. They're going to go ahead with, I'm not sure who they're going to bring on. Is it Chandrapal Hemraj? No, it's not him. He's open for them in the past. It is going to be Walid Karimullah, who has come in um, in a similar spot, has uh, been a part of the opening attack through the most part of the minor league. And last week came in as a first change. He angles it back into the right-hander, and it just keeps going with the angle. So for the left-hander, the hero is going to come across his face here. And you see that slip in place. You see he keeps going with the angle, work down to third man. Lahiru did a lot of the watching at the non structures end after facing one, uh, the second illegal delivery, I guess you would have to say, because you won two no balls to start. Didn't face any of the deliveries, technically. Uh, so he's been, hasn't really seen the legal delivery yet. That was his first one. But now Obis Pinard, Nate, tell me about Obis. What does he do with the bat? Wonderful for St. Louis last year. Well, he's, he's tall. He can hit it straight. He can hit it far. He's a, he's a very good quality batter. He can pretty much play to the situation. Stay in there. This is exactly the guy you want in right now if you're the Morris. I saw him here when uh, USA was preparing for a tour in November. Uh, he batted against USA's uh, men's team in two games. He scored 90-odd in one game and 60-odd in another. So he is definitely a class player. Well, here we go. He's got to face Karimullah. Oh, and that one jumps back in. No run offer. You could see that one was well wide. It looked like he was ready to cut it and just jumps back in on him. Again, it's the way he brings. Again, these Somerset Cavaliers bowlers not making life easy at the start here not for the Raptors. Definitely troublesome right now. Like we said, there's this is only the second over, Nate. And it feels like a lot has happened. It feels like the games are down and it's yeah. like the Raptors are already struggling here in the power play. Looking to cut that one away, just a little jump on it. A lot of oohs you could hear. You could see Obis, he said ooh after it left. <laughs> Obis looked a little bit fatigued last week um, down there in Florida. Recently recovered from, uh, from, from a COVID battle a few weeks ago. Told me if you really rough. Well, the Raptors are going to hope so, but right now the Cavaliers are on top of the match. And it's with deliveries like that. A sneaky run taken, chance of a run out. Didn't really go anywhere. I think had he hit at the non-striker's end, he was gone. Pressure on for the Raptors. Real confusion between the two of them, Lahiru and Obis. I don't think Lahiru wanted to see more partners fall at the other end. He wanted no. to get on strike, and Obis survives. Yeah, risky there. But, you know, they could have taken another run on that one if, uh, if Lahiru had, wasn't a good 10 yards <laughs> well, <laughs> down he, towards the sight screen at the end of the, his run. Well, they already had it on the other end. But, uh, but yeah. Okay, no fielders out on the deep on the offside for Lahiru. He likes to play big over the top there. Cut and pull. That one has gone through everybody with the angle. I'm not sure if there's bad on it. Let's take the umpire's signal here. And he's given buys for four. So it was just the swing that undid the keeper. He's undone everybody. 
It's going to be four runs for the total, not the way you want it, but for the Morsel Raptors. Definitely, you. If you are a, if you are the Somerset Cavaliers, you do not want to. You can't really afford to give many of those. This this game is, yeah, 133 at this point of the year at Church Street Park. That's a that's a very competitive total, but it's not enough to just give up four four buys. Absolutely, you want it. the pressure's already on the Raptors. Don't alleviate any of it. Don't give them this freedom that okay, we've got a boundary in our over. We got two singles, so there's already six runs. We can settle back down and we can just play, play them over covers, play them over point, and bring in some of these fielders in the infield. He does that one, tries to run it past the man at point, unable to do so, and it's going to be a dot there. And that's going to do it for two overs here at Church Street Park in the second innings. The Morsel Raptors, they're nine for the loss of two. He's so soft-spoken. Oh, yeah. Everyone says he's so. The 2022 Tundra. Toyota. Let's go places. You're watching the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. Welcome back to Church Street Park here. Over the break, Nate Hayes giving me an interesting stat, and I'm going to give him the opportunity to give it to you guys. Nate, what would you find out? So, in the Cavaliers' innings, the Raptors gave them seven, seven extras, seven extra runs that didn't come off the bat, and already, already the Cavaliers have given the Raptors six. So six of the nine runs from Morrisville Raptors right now, not even off the bat. Well, if you're the Somerset Cavaliers, you'll be happy and sad at that notion that, okay, they're not scoring off the bat, but we're giving them runs, then they don't have to right, score off the right. bat. So happy and sad, but Najif Shah has been tight. He's been very, very special apart from the two no balls that he's bowled. Again, that angle back and that swing to the right-hander, Obis has got, to be, has got to be careful not to fall victim to that one again. Right, it's almost, it's almost a stat that's going to discourage you a little bit if you're the Raptors. You, you don't feel like you've done much because you really haven't. You got nine runs on the board, and you're lucky for six of them. And full straight. I think that one's going down the leg side. He definitely was coming down the front foot. Hit him on, hit him on the back pad, but he's standing little outside leg stump. I think that one is definitely missing. Whether the line was going to go on to crash on the stumps, I think he's got the right one here. Yeah, I think that was a solid call. And when in doubt, the tie goes to the batsman, and Obis... Won't say given a life, but he survives that LBW appeal angle. It's not going to be right hand, left hand. It's a left hander versus left hander. And you can see Lahiru, he's going to be able to play through the covers. Now, the only thing you're worried about is that first slip. If he tries to play an expansive drive, gets a thin edge. Right. Virat Kohli type of fashion to the fine first slip. He was trying to pull it, opted out that shot very, very late, and just kind of put his bat out there. So no run on offer. Sounded really nice. <laughs> Unfortunately for Lahiru, it didn't really clear the right. Well, for the square. <laughs> for those for those watching who are familiar with baseball and not familiar with cricket, in baseball, a lefty lefty matchup, the pitcher has an advantage. In cricket, a lefty lefty matchup, the batter has a little bit of an advantage. Not as much trouble by the ball swinging away as he would be by a ball coming in, especially when it's coming quick. Yeah, Najif is quick, and we've seen to Lahiru, he's elected to be a little bit shorter. And for the right-handers, he's gone much fuller and has invited the ball to swing. So something to watch for, for Lahiru. Comes down the track. This time it was fuller. It's hit straight back. No one's going to stop that one. Lahiru's got a powerful bat, and he sends that one all the way for four. So signs of life here for the Morrisville Raptors. Their first boundary of the innings, and Lahiru's getting it going now. A little bit of breath, breath of fresh air there. This, uh, the way to play the power play here is to try not to get a lot of wickets. You try not to lose a lot of wickets. You, you, you don't, you know, a lot of, but you also want to have those runs. There's a couple different strategies you can take. You kind of have to take the, the Chennai Super Kings <laughs> legacy uh, strategy here where you, you try to survive for about, you know, 40 runs. Well, here, with, let's say 25, 30, 35 runs uh, from, from Morrisville. But you don't want to lose another wicket then at all. Yeah, and Lahiru, he's known to do this. We've seen him time and time again come down the track and make some things happen. So I think if you're going to just, if you're Lahiru, you're not going to sit back and just let the balls come to you. You're going to go and take the attack to the bowlers. Again comes down, again lifts it over the top. Shot. This time it was one bounce over the rope and four more. Again, he's not going to sit around and let Najib Shah just pick the balls he wants to bowl. He's going to say, no, you got to change it up. 
and he's making Najif shot change it up. Four more for the Morsel Raptors, and now they're getting involved in the scoring. Right, and last year Lahiru did he batted a little bit he batted lower in the order, came in on a lot of pressure situations where you felt like he had to save save the game and now he can bat a little bit more freely at the top. You'd think he could bat a little more freely at the top of the order, but he's also a little bit handcuffed by the score here. But right now starting to come a lot. When Najif probably pulls his length or he's gonna go all the way full. Expect him to stay in the crease this time, and if it's short, expect him to go for the big shot. But this time, chased him down the legs. No runs on offer, so that's going to do it for three overs. The Morsel Raptors, after three, they're 18 for the loss of two. What got into you? <laughs> At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. Fuel your best. Om Patel here joined alongside Nate Hayes here for the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. Look at the crowd. Look at all the wonderful folks here that are supporting cricket in the local community here for the Morsel Raptors. They've drawn such a crowd here at Church Street Park. It's a festival. And right now, the festival is Obis Pinar. He comes down the track. He's lifted this one over the offside. No fielders there. And it's one bounce. Two bounces make that over the rope. He's come down, and these two bats, when they've said, we're not going to sit and let them mention Probus Pinar. Smart stuff there, and using his reach, using every inch of his reach there to get to that, get the meat of the bat on the ball, and uh, just guide it where no fielders were. Yeah. Great shot. They've kept no fielders deep on the offside, apart from a third man, so they're going to get, they're loving the stuff that they're seeing from Obis Pinar. Two very dangerous batters in right now for the Raptors. These are two. These are probably the two guys at this, at this point you want in the middle. Absolutely experience. They know what to do. They can play all the shots. Try to go cut it. They decide not to go off for that single. Remember last over of uh, this time, they decided to stay home. Getting that four to start the over kind of eases everything up. The bowlers got to rebuild a little bit from there. At least he feels like he does. Still a slip in play for Garimula. The ball angling back in. Everybody gets to see how pretty it is. We have a lot of people here. It's beautiful. Wonderful temperature right now for, for the 1st of July. And, you know, hopefully we'll get more USA games here when the improvements are made to the facility. Because as things are right now, we see Obis Pinar swing and miss there and get beat by the bowler. But as things are now, it's only eligible to host T20Is, and USA has only hosted two T20Is on American soil, and those were in December against Ireland. So unless this ground is improved for ODI standard, we're not going to get any international matches here. That's just the bottom line. And Major League Cricket has a deal in place with uh, the town of Morrisville to make that happen, to bring some seating here, to bring some uh, locker rooms and changing rooms for the players. And we'll, we hope to get some soon. Again, movement from Pinar. He's worked that one straight back down the ground for one. And again, like you said, that deal that Major League Cricket has to allow this facility to become an ODI status ground is a huge uh, step up and you know I was down in Musa Stadium the facilities they had they Excellent. were great they yeah. had a broadcast booth they had changing rooms dressing rooms with baths and I'm gonna what Saki Muhammad did down there at Musa Stadium and again they were absolutely phenomenal down there and um, you know Church Street Park I love Church Street Park and if those improvements can be made we're gonna see a lot of international matches here as we see the Hiro taking on comes down it's gonna be a wide delivery the extras again, Nate. Yeah. We talked about it six already. That's number seven. seven. Now. Yeah. Twenty-three runs on the board. This is something you got to look for for right. the Cavaliers. Yeah, and I said a minute ago that the only runs they were getting, but at this point, you love them, you know, because you're scoring with the bat too. So this just multiplies the problem for New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. And it takes that pressure away. Your boundary scored. You create a duck ball, create a single, and just give one away. 
This one definitely pitching outside the leg stump. There's no doubt about it. He's standing on the leg stump. It swings back in, and you can see <laughs> him having a little smile and a laugh. Uh, like he was pointing. He's pointing, calling a shot again. Definitely picking, uh, pitching outside the leg stump there. Again, you got to love the appeal. You got to give it to him. You got to sell it. You got to sell it. Yeah, but, well, it's, uh, it looked like the hero was giving Walid a lesson in LBW, LBW rulings there uh you know didn't check off all the boxes there's a order that things have to happen in and it didn't even check off the first one yeah if you get send that one upstairs it's getting rejected in five seconds this one full straight and it's just worked down the ground for a quick single and that is going to do it for over number four and at the end of four overs the morse raptors they're 25 for the loss of two i need one hand on the roof one hand on the pump time out for sunoco go rewards <laughs> yep. Walk it's the man who's bored in the PSL, Ned Asif. He's coming into the Hiro Malanta. Nate, you were just gushing over him when we had a conversation earlier. Tell me about him. Well, he. He definitely brings a little bit of pace, brings a lot of bounce. Of course, with his height, he can hit the deck pretty well, put it, put it back at your ribs, make it uncomfortable for the batters. The, it, the luxury here for the Cavaliers is to save him for, for the fifth over. Well, he's gone back of a length straight away. This is interesting, though. If I'm the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, I like the aggressiveness of having a slip. I'm just not sure he's necessary. If you see Lahiru coming down, if you're going to bowl into the ribs or bowl back of length, I would rather have a short third. Because if it pops up and now you have the opportunity to get that catch at third man, here if it's at slip, if he's not driving forward or if you're not going to square up the swing. I mean, thought in the batsman's head, you know, oh, we, they got a slip. You know, it puts a, puts a little thought in their minds. Which is always fair, but it doesn't seem to be weighing on Lahiru's mind. Against oh, your, I think that looked like it got a little... Did it get a little bit of an inside edge? Well, it's definitely gone through him. And it's given his runs by the umpire. So, yes, there was a little bit of glove or inside edge on it. Evades that leg stump, and he's gone away for four. And this is what I'm talking about. Instead of that slip, I'd rather have a short third or maybe a fine leg, yeah. a short fine, because of the fact that he's going to bowl back of a length. I don't think the slip really comes into play. Well, maybe that's something not, to look at. Not when you're bowling it there. And... And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy. I was thinking I might have to get a stronger prescription for my glasses, but I saw that inside edge, man. I, I, I mean, I, I felt like I saw that happen. So I can save myself a couple hundred bucks, I think. Hey, a couple hundred bucks saved is a couple hundred bucks earned as you see the Somerset Cavaliers uh, fielders out there just hanging out. This time, foolish delivery. Went for the Yorker, just ended up being kind of a waist height full toss. Wasn't able to get real bad on Waving around to all of our friends. It's great. I love being here. This is one place I always want to be. Yeah, Churchy's Park. I live a mile down the road, and uh, I think my parents did the best job in 2009 picking the premier location so that I could walk to Church Street Park. I've been here for... Man, that that's a long longer time than I want to say. Even started, don't believe it. I think I think they started planning it in 2012. I think you hit the bun with that one, Nate. And again, just to see the way it's grown has been impressive. Now we have Obis Pinar on strike and the pull shot there. He's just evaded the fielder inside the circle and he's gotten away for four. Again, we know he wants to pull back of a length. Yeah. That's why I'm saying the slip maybe not the best idea. But skillful. a very skillful shot from Obis Pinar. Keeping that in front of the, the completely with the shot, which would have taken it possibly into the fielder's hands. Good work there. And you can see Asif, he's saying, man, very impressive. He just kind of flicked it. Didn't really try to over hit it. Just right. placed it. And Knew that it would is run. the talent right. on Obis Pinar. The, the ground is graded, so it's going to slope down a little bit. Balls run really well here. It's one of the, uh, one of the things people love about this ground. Even if the, even when the wicket is a little bit slow, if you know how to play, if you know how to take real cricket shots, that's the big advantage of playing here on this ground. A lot of guys are used to playing on Astro. Less and less these days, but... ...side in the circle, and they're able to sneak by for a single that was a little bit fuller. But again, doing a good job, the Raptors here. Kind of what Meat Shaw and we saw Pranav Rao do 
just working into gaps, hitting the boundaries a little bit more often, but they're doing a great job just not. Go down a little bit, we're getting a little bit of darker skies, which means the lights are gonna play a bigger role and the, 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 this park has a whole nother feeling when it's under the lights. It's, it's, it's a wonderful light. feeling. It's like, it's like a, you know, a field of dreams. Nothing better when the lights are on as this one is jammed onto the pads. Not a lot of room for Lihiru to work with, but that is going to do it for the first five overs. After five, the Morsel Raptors, they're 35 for the loss of two. A change in bowling here. It's going to be introduction of spin. It's going to be Chandrapal Hemraj who opened the bowling for the Somerset Cavaliers last week. Now being saved for the last over of the power play. Bowling into Obis Pinar, the left arm orthodox spinner. Slap that one down. That's a dot ball. So those watching here who aren't used to cricket, you, you, hopefully you got the idea by now that you don't have to run when you hit the ball in cricket. You run when you want to score. And Obis Pinar wants to score. He's gone down the ground. Jinder Paul does a very good job following him around. Again, you could see that movement very, very early. It's just going to end up being one for the Raptors. Yeah, Jinder Paul, star player for this team, both sides of the ball. Yeah, a lot of people come out to watch Jinder Paul Hemraj. I got a couple of questions from a couple of different people asking about Hemraj and you know what his status with the team is. Is he playing and what's going to be the deal? And Guyanese. everyone wants everyone wants to watch Jinder Paul Hemraj play. Yeah, Guyanese cricketer. A um, lot of big Guyanese population uh, up there in uh, New York. I'm going to give a shout out to Dave Jagger, who played for the West Indies. Oh, and that's oh, a shot Kali Chodron would be proud of. Left-handers raise up. that six runs there from Lehiru Malanta. Aggressive. The ball sat up for him, and he just smacked it away over the offside. Six for Lehiru Malanta. This is what we need from these two. We need them to stay and take advantage of the opportunity to, to score boundaries when they see a ball that's that's sitting there for them to smash. Absolutely, that one sent on to the parking lot. No one's cars were damaged, don't worry. Right, right. It is something that's happened. It's not out of the ordinary, but that one didn't get anybody. Let's see how Hemraj responds. Usually he's gonna get very full, gonna probably cramp you for room. That time he just was short, he was wide, and Lahidu wasn't gonna miss out. Try to go full, try to cramp him for room. It's just gonna be one out to long on for Lahiru, but again, smart cricket. You hit a six, you get right. off strike. Get off strike, yep. If the ball's there for a single, you hit a single. If the ball's there for six, you hit six. That's what you gotta do at this point in the game. Later on, maybe force things, get creative. You know, you see videos of Joe Root practicing four shots on the same single ball. Uh, you know, but this isn't the time to get too crazy with that sort of thing. You take what's there, as long as something's there. And something there for the Bassmen. They're going to push for two. This is good running from the Morris Raptors. It was just Excellent. tucked into the leg side in front of mid-wicket. There was no footer there. There was one in the deep, and they pushed early, and they are able to get away for two runs, putting pressure back on the Cavaliers, saying, look, we're scoring. you got to take our wickets a different way. Yeah. And there's times when a, batsman, when a batting pair will talk to each other, decide that, hey, I'm going to take this bowler on, you know, and that'll encourage them to run for those two. Went for the big slog sweep. It's something he tries to entice Hemraj. This time it was hitting him outside the line. Another LBW decision is going to be in the favor of the Raptors. And after six overs, the Raptors are 45 for the loss of two. वक्त आ गया है लक्ष्मी बासमती राइस को घर लाने का। लक्ष्मी एक्स्ट्रा लॉन्ग बासमती राइस। इसका हर दाना हो इतना लंबा, पकते हुए महके और प्लेट पे क्या खूब खिले। हाँ, मेरे घर लाने का।
ये क्या बात हुई है So we are back here at Church Street Park. It is Umaid Ansef coming back in on Asif, excuse me, for the next over. You showed me the little worm that we have here, Nate. What's the worm telling you right now? Worm's telling me that Morrisville has definitely recovered to a point where they should be happy and just steady the ship for now, you know. Like I said before, you hit what's what's there to hit. Yeah, they're ahead of the required run rate at the moment, ahead of what the Somerset Cavaliers were at this point, and it's because of this man in the screen. Ooh, there was some jump. We talked about the pace and the nip that he gets, the bounce that he gets. That we was just saw that one. Bit of an ugly check swing there. That's that's what I do. <laughs> you know, it's easy to edge the ball when you do that. You know, it's really easy. But uh, hey, he didn't touch it. No harm done. The more to try to run down and things like that. And that time again, just checks it at the last second. Didn't get the edge. But Omeyed Asif, he's going to keep coming in, storming in. Again short, this time down the leg side. Going to be deemed wide by the umpire. The extras again, Nate, Once taking again. the pressure away from the Morris Four Raptors. Can't really afford them anymore at this point in the game. Not with these two out there. You're not putting any pressure on them when you give them that type of a ball. And don't be surprised to see Lahiru come down or maybe even step a little bit further back. If he's going to continue to go short, you might see him just wait a little bit, try to get it around the corner, around fine leg. We see a lot of lefties play that pull shot very right. fine to something because you play a lot of right-handed bowlers, you're just able to tuck yeah. it around the corner. And we didn't see Asif last week for New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Uh, last week their wild card was Naven Stewart, who took six wickets himself. So clearly they want a good... They want a top order. They want a top, you know, level bowler in this team, a top level quick bowler in this team, yes. at that wild card position. Absolutely, and the loss of Navian Stewart is big, right? Obviously, what he does with both bat and ball is something you're going to miss. And again, six wickets in opening weekend, and to not have him available for this weekend is all always going to be tough. But to be able to replace him right. with talent like this is always the big deal. Right, um, and it allows you to kind of. Keep those options available. If you mm -hmm. lose him, you get a lower quality player. Now you're like, okay, do we really want to try him? Do we right. just save him? But if you're going to lose Naven Stewart, you may as well go ahead and get who made off. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad trade off, indeed. This one is slower, it's fuller, oh. and there's no fielder out there. It's going to be four runs. He tried to entice him with a slower ball. He just missed his length that time, Asif. And it's going to be four more for Lahiru. Lahiru, he's putting on a show right now under the lights. Definitely what the doctor ordered here at Church Street Park. And if anybody's watching this for the first time or just wants to reach out and ask a question, you, you can uh, find me on Twitter. My, my handle is CrickFanUSA, so at symbol. Tag me and I'll uh, reply to you if I see it. Nate, the man involved in everything USA Cricket, and Lahiru, the man involved in everything run scoring. Just going to be one this time. Again, did well to get onto it quickly. Again, you can also tag Minor League Cricket. You can follow the Minor League Cricket networks at all their social medias. The YouTube is MLC Network. The Twitter, at M-I-L-C Cricket. Uh, M-I-L Cricket, and if you want to say it like that. <laughs> Facebook is at M-I-L-C USA. And Instagram is the same, at M-I-L-C USA. You can also tag me on Twitter. My not as straightforward as maybe Nate Hayes's at AP Sports News underscore again eight at AP Sports News underscore a lot of great resources to learn about the game and get more insight about what's going on through minor league cricket right now we have Obis Pernar on strike and oh. he will stay on strike for the next delivery a little bit of confusion and they end up saying dot balls all around <laughs> we had them maybe wanting a quick single an overthrow they said maybe then they said no they like to say no in the end there's always action in cricket. Every ball, there's action. There's going to be action. There's a few dot balls here and there, but it's almost like every other ball. There's something ex exciting happening. Uh, if you're new to cricket, you want to watch an explainer online. Uh, the best that I've seen is John Boy Media explaining cricket for baseball fans. Look that one up on YouTube. You can't beat it. It's it's amazing stuff. He's done great stuff to bring attention to cricket in the USA to non-traditional cricket fans. Absolutely. He's got now a big room in his new New York office to where you can watch all the cricket. He would like to, as he said in his video announcing that Studio Love, John Boy, and everything he does over there. 
And that's going to be Ooh. given a no ball by the umpire. I think he's bowled one too many. Oh, no, he's said wide instead, not a no ball. So maybe the first one was not the one for the over this time going over the head. It is a wide. That is the rule. Over the head, a wide. If it's the second one, however, then that would be deemed a no ball. This was deemed to be the first one that was around head height. So, and you can see the umpire signaling one for the over. So just the wide ball, not a no ball for the Raptors. Great breakdown there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning from John Boy. You know, I, I got to get uh, hired. So here we go. We've got Amit Asif, P PSL bowler, racing in against Obus Pinar. Obus' full name is Jacobus Pinar. Well, that's his... I think that's his full name. I think it's Abraham Jacobus Pinar. Oh, whatever his name is, he gets a single. That's all yeah. that we need to he know. He goes by Obus. <laughs> he, he goes by Obus, and the Warsaw Raptors, at the end of seven overs, they'll go back with 53 for the loss of two. Chunderball Hemraj comes back into the attack. He was bowling to Obas Pinar. Gets a single out there here at the 2022 Chiyoda Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. Again, none of the cricket that you're seeing would be possible without our sponsors, our title sponsor, Toyota, our presenting sponsor, Sunoco, and our official sponsor, Daffa News. All three tremendous partners of our amazing game here. Cricket for Minor League Cricket. And the Morsel Raptors, they're in cruise control at the moment. Can Hemraj break it? Nearly did it there. Came down the track looking for the big heave. Lahiru not really needed. Inside edge evades all three stumps. Finds fine leg. But Hemraj nearly delivered the blow that was needed. It is 79 degrees, let me say, at Church Street Park. This is remarkable for July. And Lahiru has just worked this one through the leg side for a quick single. A little tangle between Obis and Hemraj. Obviously nothing intentional, so they're able to get away with that for a single. Make it 55 for the total. And again, you said it during the break, great recovery from the Raptors. They've done so well to come back into the match and allow themselves this opportunity to be at this stage where they seem ahead. And that one, Obis didn't really know what he wanted to do, and it ends up being a single nonetheless, an inside edge that runs away. Hemraj nearly delivers three strikes. Sometimes, sometimes lucky is better than good. In this case, we got both going out, going on out there right now. When they're not good, they're lucky. And when they're when they're good, they don't. Deliver that wicket again. Comes oh. down another outside edge and another one that won't do anything to affect the wickets columns. And Obis is kind of saying, "What's going on?" Good bowling. Again, comes down. This one just worked through the leg like side. More conventional shot. They should pick up two. They will pick up two. Again, and over that's kind of been going a little up and down for the Raptors with all these opportunities. Yeah. It ends in a pretty safe way to end it. 58 runs on the board after eight, two wickets down. Welcome back here to Church Street Park. The Morsel Raptors, they're 58 for the loss of two after eight. They need 75 runs in 12 overs with eight wickets remaining in hand. The required run Damian. rate just a little bit over six. And Damian Jacobs being brought in. He took a fiver here at Church Street Park, and they're going to need him to do something spectacular today. 
Yes, ooh, well played there. Paddled it, paddled it behind square for four. Great shot. Damian Jac Jacobs has performed very well at this ground last year with the uh, with his with his previous team, the Titans, the Empire State Titans, and it was a big acquisition here for uh, for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. He led the Atlantic Conference or the Atlantic, yeah, he led the Atlantic Conference in wickets last year. Turns the ball pretty square. Doesn't get a ton of bounce. He's 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 a he's a, he's a big ripper of the ball. Yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. And again, that's why he's been brought on at this stage. They know they need a spark. They need someone right. to flip that switch. And Damian Jacobs, if he gets a wicket here, gets two, you're back in it. And there it is. He's lighting up the stumps. The big slog sweep comes out from Obis Pinar. He went to go for the big one. And all three stumps light up. Hits middle stump, and that's what we're talking about. There's a spark, and you can see the fire on Damian Jacobs. He knows what he's just done. Has this turned the tide back for the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers? Yeah, I think it has, considering who just got out. I think this has uh, created a little bit of a mountain now for, for Morrisville. Uh, I don't want to, you know, not trying to say Morrisville's going to panic here, but that is a batter they would have wanted to see last the rest of the innings, or as long as he he possibly could have, you know, that was a little bit of a risky, def, well, a lot of bit of a risky <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, it's not the type, type of way you want to play Damon Jacobs at this point in the innings. There's no reason to try something like that right now. Yeah, and you can see what he was attempting to do. He's trying to get it over the top there. But we saw him sweep first ball, and I thought maybe there's the LBW, but it didn't pitch, yeah. so he's able to get away with it. Gets it for four. Right. This time, it pitched, allowed it to swing. There's a big gap between bat and pad. Right. And now you're going to bring Sanjay Stanley, the youngster, in yeah. the middle. And I like the move to send Sanjay Stanley in. Went a right. little bit lower down the order mm -hmm. last week. But he's the one who just kind of takes it around. Not going right. to do anything That's crazy. That's what you want right now. And, and yeah, I think uh, Obis was a little bit of a victim of sometimes you play, you know, you got to, they say, play the ball, not the bowler. Sometimes, I think he played the previous ball, not the bowler. <laughs> And I think you need to take into account sometimes that the bowler is a little bit better quality than that, that bad ball you just saw. Yeah, and you can see the slip being brought in place for Sanjay Stanley. Damian Jacobs took five here. It's turf. It's what he likes. It's what he's grown up on. Sure. Not playing on the Astro. Loves that playing is, here, too. Exactly. Absolutely loves this ground. Raves about it. So can he pick up another couple wickets? A chance of that one there is just over the top, a leading edge. Oh He's going to be upset. I think he feels maybe Lahiru got in his way. I don't think Lahiru affected the path, didn't change his direction. Didn't look like it too much. But nearly, nearly wicket number two for Damian Jacobs and wicket number four for the Morsel Raptors. And you can see Sanjay and Lahiru having a word. Lahiru saying, it's okay, young buck. Just you're fine. That, you have a lot, you have a lot of shots. Yeah, stay yeah. in. You'll be fine. Yeah, I, I posted a video. Uh, myself getting bowled in the nets. Damian Jacobs had a little bit too much of a laugh about it, I think. <laughs> well, there's what you're looking for, but he's, oh, Razi picked no. out the fielder. Oh, he, oh, he spilled it. it. He spilled it. He picked out the fielder. Not the greatest of deliveries. It rushed onto Lahiru a little bit more. It spun away from him as well. And he picked out the man at deep mid wicket. Jacobs not happy. You can see him looking to the sky with disgust yells out saying, we need that wicket. That was it. We break the partnership. Get two new men in the middle. Oh, my god! But instead, Lihiru gets put down and has been given a life here. Right. On 32. Remember, 32 off 26, Lihiru Melanta given a life. B2, they are going to push for two, and they are going to get it quite easily. And again, Damian Jacobs, he's a very animated character, isn't he? You can see the hands on the hips. He's frustrated. Felt he should have had a wicket on the ball previous. Very and passionate. Now, yeah. And now he's felt the fielder has let him down, and that's going to do it. Nine overs gone, 66 for the loss of three. Yeah. Welcome back. Chandra Hemraj continues to Lahiru. Lahiru this time stays in his crease, works it through the leg side. They're going to push for two and get it quite easily in the end. Sanjay has fresh legs, legs and young legs as well. 
Yeah, definitely. We saw Damian Jacobs' passion at the end of the last over. <laughs> it's a good thing that the commercial... Well, he's a very animated character. He's going to express his emotions, and he's going to express his disgust when he feels it is warranted. And he felt it was warranted, and he's definitely doing so. Lahiru comes down, but doesn't play anything sloggy, just looking to work it away. Gets a single, and Sanjay Stanley now on strike to the left arm orthodox, Chandraval Hemraj. Nothing sloggy now. We don't need anything sloggy. We just need them to, you know, dink it around, like you said. I like that. Sloggy. I like I, that. I think I might have invented a word. I don't think of anyone's it's going on a t-shirt. <laughs> Someone put it on a shirt, send it to me. We'll get it printed, and uh, I'll wear that to the next game if you send that one. <laughs> one of us wears nothing. The other one wears sloggy, and we get a picture like that. <laughs> Sanjay Stanley, nothing sloggy indeed. Just looking to play it through covers, but a great job in the field. We saw the Raptors on plenty of occasions put great effort in the field. Somerset Cavaliers following suit. Yeah, 64 runs needed to win, 10, point four, 10 overs to do it in, and some change. To go with one, didn't want to test the arm of Richard Allen. Again, Lahito has played Hemraj well as well, so I think they're going to want to keep Lahito on strike. Again, you're just over a run of ball at the moment, 63 needed in 62, seven wickets in hand, still bad. Games going all across the country, and we'll get to that game right after this delivery here. As oh it's another God. inside edge that's evaded stumps. It seems there. like it's Get evading everybody. It's just going to be two. But Hemrod, that's the third time against Lahiru he's evoked an edge and nothing has happened. Well, I, I'm, it's a good thing we're not reading his lips too. He's, uh, he had some bad luck today. He, he's bowled very, very well, I think. And uh, definitely going for more runs than he should. And I don't even think he's gone for that many at all. He yeah, has the dipping that's undoing him at the moment. He's bowled. 2.5 overs, and he's given up 21 runs, a lot of them off of edges. The 4 1, and that's going to do it. 10 overs gone, 73 for the loss of three. We'll talk about this one. Look at the Houston. Hi, son. He's so soft. He never forgets to call. Hi, Mom. Born for your true self. The 2022 Tundra. Toyota. Let's go places. Lights are on here at Church Street Park, and the stars are shining bright elsewhere as well as Damian Jacobs comes back. Tell me what's going on in the matches elsewhere in minor league cricket, Nate. Well, the Blasters are currently getting blasted. They were all out for 130, and Houston right now 110 for four after in the middle of the 14th, 15th over, sorry. Ashley Nurse in the middle, so that could potentially end very quickly. And we'll talk about the other game in just a second. Damian Jacobs wants to see the end of Lahiru very quickly. Just going to be one run there. I yeah, guess. one thing about Damian that we see on this pitch is his ball does, it can stay it can stay really low. He puts a lot of revs on it. Bowls it in such a way that, it, that it'll go right under the batter. And that's dangerous when he puts it on the stumps. That's extra dangerous. And stumps. he gets it a dip quite quickly as well because yeah. of the revs that he's able to put. And I think that's what undid Obis Pinar with the big slog. I think it just dipped on him a little bit quickly yeah. and got onto his stumps quicker than he was expecting it to. That's right. something you got to be careful of, especially if you're Sanjay Stanley, new to the crease. This one pitched up, plays it through covers, gets it through covers. Looks like it's just going to be one. They're pushing two. Lahiru sends the young man back. Just one. And again, that's all you need. You're going out of run a ball at the moment. Right. That's all that's required. Le and Lahiru, as good as he is against spin, definitely wants to keep the strike. There's no reason to rush into, into uh, two runs right there. Lahiru is the guy that needs to be on strike in this partnership against this bowler. And it's the calmness, the experience of Lahiru just saying we don't need anything fancy, just one, two. Well, there's something fancy. Tried it, came down the track, sliced it, didn't get all of it. If he had, might have picked out the fielder, so maybe lucked out on that one. Maybe slips out of some some new gloves. That up. is that is the trick. You do something like that, you miss hit it a little bit, you got to blame the equipment. It's just it's the way to do it. Even the pros do it. Well, he's been out there for a long time. He's sweating. It's humid out here in Morseville. So understandable as there's an inside edge that leads to a single. Again, Damian Jacobs making things difficult for Morseville, making them think, but Morseville only needing to run a ball. They're just happy to let these things dance. That 214 in their, in their innings, uh, Lone Star Athletics, 150 for sixth in the 18th over. It looks like Michigan has a big edge in this right now. Uh, six wickets down for Lone Star. 
Seven wickets down now for Lone Star, actually. I just did see another wicket fall. And this time it could have been a wicket, but it ends up being two. Lahiru again cutting, again finding an outside edge, and again finding a gap in the field. It seems to be Lahiru's day at the moment. Nothing's finding the fielders. It was cut off by the man at third man. This is what you want from if you're the Raptors. This is what you want from Lahiru at the top of the order. And Damian Jacobs, he's off to the races. Imran Tahir would be proud. Not as quick as him, but you can see he's excited. He's exuberant about it. He's pumped up because that is the opener gone and the pressure back on the Morseful Raptors because you're going to get a new man inside Sanjay Stanley. The fourth wicket goes for the Morseful Raptors. Well, you can tell who the crowd's cheering for. <laughs> Damien ran out there. He's playing heel. He's, he should join the WWE after this. He ran out there, gave a little fist pump. Nobody made a sound because everybody here is cheering for the Raptors. But you got to love the heel move there by Damian Jacobs uh, if you're a fan of cricket, if you're a fan of entertainment. Well, he's taking notes from Ali Khan. I was down there in Houston when they are doing a little bit of a dance over at the Nepal Loved crowd. It. Loved it. And he's a definite showman. And Damian Jacobs, a showman of his own. But now the Morsel Raptors, they're back to a run of ball. they got two new men in the middle. And they've got to consolidate, rebuild in innings, and keep the runs flowing at this stage. Things right. are heating up under the lights at Church Street Park. Welcome back to Church Street Park as we head into the second half of the match. The new man in the middle is going to be Jim, excuse me, he's going to be Vinod Kumar. But there's a four. Welcome, ease of the pressure that was just building. The, yeah. The Cavaliers always seem to let it go whenever they have it. This one straying down the leg side. Sweep was on and sweep was taken from Sanjay Stanley, and he is going to have to lead from the front. Now 50 needed in 53. This time outside the off stump and a dot ball there, but again, that boundary just takes so much out of that dot ball. Now you're right. on the back foot if you're the Cavaliers. You're fighting back. And you know you're going to get some great balls from Hamraj here. You know he's going to bowl well, so you got to take advantage of it when he doesn't. This time it was a little bit of a full toss, worked away exactly what the Raptors need. Just a second. Right, and when you have a full toss like that, your ball's dipping really well, and you bowl a full toss like that, that dip is in the, it's in the batter's line. He knows that ball's dipping, so that ankle high full toss is, is still dangerous and that's what Sanjay has been sent in for ahead of maybe a Vinod who was a little bit more aggressive was going to play some of those bigger shots Sanjay very technical is just going to sit and play straight bat shots that's all they needed and that's why I think that tactical change was brought into play but Vinod also someone who can week he, he came in in a in a hitting role and, yeah. he, and he put the he put a target on the board that took uh, Florida all the way to the last over to chase there's a shot there. He's plucked that one through point. Is he going to clear the field or no? The no. sweeper cover gets there. They're going to get back for two, though. Again, two after a double, keeping themselves less than run a ball. 49 needed from 50 now. Forty-seven from 50. Excuse me, 47. 47 from 49. I'm sorry. Nate Hayes is just that quick, guys. He just knows what's going on. I'm watching the scoreboard. <laughs> And again, Vinod is just that quick to pick up on the situation. We just need singles, and it's smart batting now from Vinod and Sanjay. And there you go. That's going to do it for the 12th over. 87 runs, 4 wickets, 46 needed in 48 deliveries. What's up, Doug? What got into you? <laughs> At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. Fuel your best. So welcome back to Church Street Park here in the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco, the crowd is heating up here. The game is heating up and the lights are on. And Damian Jacobs is back. And he 
He's on the money right away. Slip in place. Vinod, the new man, he's facing. They're going to try to eat up these dot balls, put pressure back on the Morsel Raptor. Comes down the track, this time much more in control, and is able to push it away for one. So now Sanjay Stanley back. The two balls we've seen Damian Jacobs bowl to Sanjay have been outside the off stump, allowing him to play that cover drive. Wonder if we're going to see one pitch there, but a googly to get back that outside edge, or inside edge, rather. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all. This one Ooh. pitched back, daring him to cut. Very nearly found some kind of an edge there. Just stay than Sanjay wasn't expecting. He does stay lower than people think he will. Just overspins the ball so much. And this time it's easy. Tucked around the legs. Going to be single. Maybe two. No, they're going to settle for one. Again, it's a run of ball at the moment. 45 from 45. It's anyone's game at the moment, Nick. Yes. He's a, he's a dangerous bowler. He takes wickets all the time. Every game it seems to take wickets. Oh, big oh, appeal, no, big no, appeal, was... big appeal. I think maybe pitching outside leg, and you can see him so. smiling as well. He, well, he was, must have agreed. <laughs> he, he was up quick, and then he was down quick as well. The uh, keeper, same way. First slip, same way. I think we would have seen a lot more aggression yeah. had he known that it was out. Ken pitched up. This one hits straight back. Is there a fielder out there? Yes, he's picked the man on the deep. No mistake made from the PSL player, Ume Dasif. He makes it look easy, and Damian Jacobs, the third wicket. He's taken five here at Church Street before. He's two away from that, but more importantly, it's a dot ball. It's a new man going to have to come out, and the Morristown Raptors, after building such a solid foundation, they're falling apart. Everybody's coming down the wicket on Damian, trying to get to the pitch of the ball, trying to get to it before it turns too much, and it's costing them greatly. And at the end of third... Welcome back to Church Street Park. That's 13 overs gone, 89 runs on the board. That means 44 is required in 42. The required run rate is right above six now. And we're going to see a new man in the middle. That is going to be Colin Archibald, the left arm seamer. He's being brought in to bat. He's got long levers as well. And he's going to be facing a medium pace. The first sense of pace being brought back is going to be Karim Ullah bowling to the left hander. What can you tell me about Colin Archibald? Well, he's an aggressive batter. He's the type of guy you probably want him to come in in the 16th over instead of the 14th, the 16th, 17th over instead of the 14th, but he's certainly capable. And uh, let's see, we, we just talked, we probably want to see Sanjay Stanley taking more of the uh, batting against the spinners in these next few overs and Colin kind of having his way with the fast bowlers. That's kind of how I would do it if I were the two of them in the middle. Yeah, again, you want to make sure you keep rotating it around, but I just feel that Damian Jacobs may have something in store for Colin Archibald, who is a little bit naturally aggressive, is going to want to play his shots right. against Damian Jacobs on this wicket. is going to be tough. Again, you can see all the fans around. Right. As you see Curry Mullah come in to Colin Archibald. Ball one, and he's just tucked around his legs. A single easily done. So smart batting here from Colin. Not trying to do too much. No, just get off strike. Get off the mark. Sanjay's been in there a little while. Let him, let him uh, put some faith in him, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Again, Sanjay Stanley, he's a quality bat here. He's played a long time in the area. He's played a long and just digging out and extracting in innings. And this is the kind of innings built for him, not power right. hitting innings, more of an anchor, keep ones and twos pushing. We'll right. see what Sanjay's able to do. He's going to run away for four. Maybe not the most in control. He definitely wanted it to be in that region. Good, Found good, an outside edge. Good work. It's going to be four. Good work, I say. <laughs> Good work indeed. The Morsel Raptors, they gain a pleasant boundary to put them below 6 and over. 39 needed from 40 now after that boundary takes them to 94. And again, Karim Ullah is someone who gives you some width. He's going to go back of a length oftentimes. So he's someone you can play if you can play with soft hands and play it fine. 
third man is a scoring option if this, there's a short third. Yeah, full onto the pads is something we've seen him do. Again, it's just going to be interesting to see how he backs up that delivery. He likes to keep it coming in with the angle, so he starts it quite wide. Can he start it straighter, and can he keep it on stumps, not giving Sanjay Standing the freedom to just place it around, make him actually have to really force it away? Right, yeah. yeah. Change it strike. And that one was a slower one. You can see Sanjay Stanley signaling it to the man at the non-strikers. Waited for it for quite a while, uh, actually, and it was full it was outside the off stump. Didn't try to do too much with it, but that means now 39 required from 39. Again, pressure involved here at Churchy Park on both sides. Lights are out, and everyone's shining. That's a flaw. He's worked that one through the covers. It was a slower ball as well. Did he have enough money? And they elect not to. It's going to be Sanjay Stanley on strike. Just two runs off of that one. Maybe three was on offer, Nate. Yeah, I think it was there, especially looking at that side of the field. I noticed that the that the fielders over there were a little slow throwing the ball in uh, earlier. So I might have tried to have three in mind once I knew it was going to split them kind of equidistant. Nonetheless, you can't change it. I guess right now, it's this one closer to the body. They've worked one, and they're going to get one quite easily. This is just smart batting from Sanjay Stanley. He's taking on responsibility, not doing too much, right. tucking it around, getting singles, all you need. A lot of experience from Sanjay. We, we talked about that. We talked about he plays a lot. Um, but he, what he didn't mention was he, he was on the USA U19 team, you know, the team. He's got a, he's, a lot of people respect him around the country. He's got a lot of people cheering for him, hoping that he has a good season this year. So it's good to see him getting chances already in the first two games. Yeah, last year was unfortunate. Dealt with uh, injuries all throughout the year. Really never got it going. This year he's been giving some responsibilities, been given right. that middle order job and said, you're going to be the guy to stick in there, anchor our innings when we need you to. That's why he was sent up the order, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to look to finish the job and not let anyone else come out to bat for him. But now it's Archibald on strike. Again, full straight on the legs, worked around the corner. They're going to push two. They are going to do two. Will Archibald get back in time? It's going to be close. I think the bat was down. They're what it looked like from not, my angle. Up. Yeah, they're saying he's in. They're saying he was in. There, no signal from the umpire. Anything now would be outrageous. From my angle, it looked like he had <laughs> got the bat down. The keeper was well away, and I think he's made the right decision there. Again, it was close, it was tight. The benefit of the doubt should go to the bat. Yeah. It my... needed to be a little bit of hesitation there, but that's the end of the over. Lakshmi Basmati Rice ko ghar lane ka. Lakshmi Extra Long Basmati Rice. Iska har dana ho itna lamba, pakte huye mehke, aur plate pe kya khub khile. Ha, mere ghar lane ka. Welcome back to Church Street Park as Damian Jacobs is continuing his overs. And is going to be calling Archibald on strike. Sanjay Stanley, he's batted well. He's moving into the 20s now. And again, you can see Sanjay's having a word with Colin, maybe saying, don't need to find anything slog. No sloggy stuff. No sloggy just, stuff. Just dink it around. Nothing sloggy. No reason to get a little bit sloggy here. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're going to be sick of this term sloggy if you tune into our streams by the end of the weekend. Well, let's talk about the advantage here with the leg spinner and the left arm, left-handed batter. Yeah, spinning into him. You can hit with the spin, but again, not needed. And that's the thing maybe you're trying to entice if you're Damian Jacobs. Say, hey, I'm looping it up. Slog sweep me. You're hitting with the spin. There's yeah. no harm. No, and that's right. when you'll take his wicket. I think Sanjay had the word with him, and that's why you saw Colin check the shot, just looking to work it right. through the leg side for a single. And I think we're going to see that tight. Tight legged it, leggy here. Outside the off stump, Sanjay Strong through the covers. A little bit of a misfield, gonna allow them to scamper off for one. Good heads up, but running from the two in the middle. And Damian Jacobs frustrated that that was a single. Thought it should have been a dot ball. Probably should have. Seems like he wants uh, Sanjay to stay at stay at that end. You know, it's a little easier maybe to bowl as a leggy to a righty than a lefty. He definitely seemed like he wanted Sanjay st stuck there. I mean, the dot ball, of course, that matters more than anything else, but... This time outside the off stump, cut from Colin Archibald. He's got it through the infield. 
Not going to have the legs to go all the way. Just going to be one, but ones are specks of golden dust. 30 required now in 32. These two have done well to keep the strike rotating, not playing any rash shots. Most importantly, two balls left from Damian Jacobs. And that's a crucial. you got to see out Damian Jacobs. Don't let another wicket fall. He's been the one bowler that's been imposing. Can work through the leg side. They're going to survive this one. Okay, you have one delivery left, Colin. You don't need to do anything fancy. You don't need to play. If you're calling even a dot ball here is fine. Just don't right. concede the wicket. And for those who don't know, uh, bowlers are limited to four overs, so that's 24 balls. After that, you can't bowl anymore in the game. Damien Jacobs' last ball here at Church Street Park for the day. It's pulled away, but it's pulled flat. It's pulled in the gap, and it's going to be... I think pulled away for four. I think he's made contact with the rope. That's what the expression tells me. Four from Colin Archibald. That's how you want to play the last delivery total, of Damian Jacobs. Total carnage at the boundary there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was going off quick. That, we'll talk about it in the next over. That's the 18, 108 for the loss of five. Fifteen overs gone, five overs left. We're going to see more of Asif come into bowl. Again, like you said, carnage on the boundary. <laughs> it was a dive that he put out. It was slow between both of them. Oh, this is after I said it that cricket's probably safer at the boundary than baseball. <laughs> we just saw, uh, you know, that looked like a Chuck Cavaliers. 25 needed from the last five overs, five wickets in hand. Sanjay Stanley on strike. And a dot ball from there from Asif. He's smart. He knows what to do. He's going to keep it tight. Not going to give you a lot of room to play and swing your arms. Look for Sanjay to maybe tickle one through the leg side now. Right. Definitely. And, you know, thinking back to last year, Sanjay struggled a bit with the taller quick bowlers. Obviously, he didn't play a whole lot because of injury. And again, on the body. And he's cleaned him up. Sanjay going for the big drive down the ground. And Asif, he's brought all of his experience from the PCL. You can see he's saying... Go away now. I got your wicket. And Sanjay Stanley, after putting in all the hard work, he's got to go. We try to go for the big one. Sanjay goes for 22. More importantly, 28 balls left, and a new man will be facing when he comes in. And Asif goes with the Iron Man celebration there. He, uh, he's developed that over the last few years. Uh, we've seen that in the P PSL. Uh, known for that little celebration of his. So, uh, you know, it, I, I feel like I gave him a commentator's curse without even saying a word, Sanjay, because I thought about that Corne dry ball from last year. About just as I saw <laughs> Umaid warming up, I thought about that same, he got out the exact same ball to Corne dry, another tall right arm, fast medium bowler. And I didn't want to say it out loud, but I thought it, you know, so that was the Ghostbusters type of thing, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, brought, I brought Zool upon him. Yeah, again, it's very similar fashion. All three of the zing bales and stumps lining up. Again, 25 runs needed in 28 deliveries. They're going to send a new man out there in the middle. It'll be interesting to see who they send. It's going to be the skipper, Dane Pete. A lot of experience on him. He's played a test match for South Africa. He's going to need all that experience now alongside Colin Archibald, someone who's played a lot of cricket for the West Indies. Now you're going to need this to happen. Nice. So okay. here we go. It's going to be Dane P, the skipper, against Asif. The PSL bowler has gone full. He's gone straight, gone down the legs. It's been worked away. They're just going to settle for one. Again, don't need more than a run of ball. 24 now from 27. Right. Yeah, and, and Dane Pete is actually a pretty good T20 batter. He, he, he can score pretty quickly. Four. He's seen bowlers of this quality before. So that really comes in handy right now. He's put himself in the game to hopefully finish it off with Colin. And we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
Oh, oh made man, he is a tall, thin guy. Well, now he's going to be bowling to the tall left arm seamer for the Morrisville Raptors, and he's going to want to come around the wicket. I think he's going to try to jam up Colin Archibald. Xavier Marshall, usually with the safest pair of hands out there, was let it settle, and I think it caught him bounced all the way out. How big is this moment in the match? Huge. Omade did exactly what you set him on, and X dropped the ball. You can read his lips, too, if you'd like to. <laughs> Again, he was settled underneath it. I think he cracked it the whole way, and it just hit him square on the chest. He was underneath it, settled. All the commotion, they picked up two on the drop catch, which is even bigger. Yeah. And then that that ball kind of, that dot ball kind of cancels it a little bit. Cancels it out just a touch, but again, 22 required from 25. That catch would have changed the whole momentum of the game. You're seven down. New batsman would be in the middle alongside Dane Pete, who's only played one delivery, and you still gain lives here. A little bit sloppy from Cavaliers all throughout the day. Again, short. This time the under edge invoked. This time Xavier Marshall were off. And at the end of 16 overs, 111 on the board, 22 required from the last 24. Welcome back to the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. We're here at Church Street Park where the Morsel Raptors, they need 22 and 24 against the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers and a skipper v. skipper, Dane Feet, he's on strike and it's Najaf Shah who's going to come in and bowl the left arm captain swinging. Can he do the same against Dane Pete and take the attack to Morseville? Well, oh, but I think it's the correct one. It's very, very close. Again, Najaf Shah, he's saying no, not a wide. I think it was one. Another extra there. That's 10 extras from a New Jersey summer. I can pick up a wicket or two. Changes the match just like that. Again, Great short, shot. again, wide. Lefty, the like angle doesn't yeah. really hurt you as much. Yeah, definitely, and that was all they needed to do. It's not an easy task here mm -hmm. against a very potent bowling lineup. He's just calm and he's been calm, and so is Colin Archibald. Again, this is the the advantage of experience. They've played a lot of cricket all over the world. They just to the man out in the deep. They're going to get two for it. You can see he went short. He went into the body. Another yeah, I, if I'm if I'm the Raptors right now, everything I everything that goes in that region's going going. I'm going for two. Just it, it, they're not as quick to the ball, I don't think, as they should be. Uh, I'm not trying to be too harsh on people. I'm sitting. As, you're in really the dumps. Put them in some. Put them in some pads. Get them on the ice for the Carolina Hurricanes. <laughs> that was Islanders came down and really handed it to them at the <laughs> PNC Arena. No one saw that one coming. But right now, the, straight oh, on the legs. He's working shot. through the leg side. Should just be one. And they're. Thinking about two. Because it's through the gap, and it's going to be four. The Morrisville crowd, they're ramping up here. They're cheering. They are loving what they're seeing from Colin Archibald. The fours waving around, and that just makes the game so. Church Street Park. Send him over to the, the Morse Raptors. They need 12 and 18 balls. The catch is three wickets in hand and a new man facing that new man. Over a wiggle room if you're a Vic. Don't want to use all of it, but not a lot of pressure on what can he do. What you want. We didn't see Vivek bowl today. Give 18 balls. You would have to assume in modern T20 cricket, even with your number, say, 5 and it's now 11 from 17. You have to be in search of wickets. They've sent back long on. A bit of extra bounce from the tall pace bowler. A dot ball there. Some pressure on. Maybe the first sign. An over left. 
you know, if, if I'm Morrisville, I'm being very careful right now, maybe looking at scoring again. Single there, they have a short mid wicket because that's where they've been milking runs. Smart adjustment from the Somerset Cavaliers saying you're not going to score through mid wicket anymore, go elsewhere. Yeah, and, and while he actually hasn't been that. Runs in three overs is the one you'd rather face. Dane Pete facing right now, and they say no, another Dane Pete because the equation is slipping a little bit. 11 from 14 required. Out there in the dugout. This one a slower ball, but he's given room and is going to allow Dane Pete to get that single that you're looking for. Again, a little bit of width on offer. Finally, Dane Pete able to use it and work it away. Anyone's game. Again, the wicket is what Somerset Cavaliers are looking for. Vivek Narayan. It's 10 from 13. A single would be great. Right. A dot ball is okay. A wicket really turns the game around and maybe in the favor of Somerset just because the pressure of being eight wickets down. But here goes Asif. Last delivery of the match for him. And it's just flirted outside the off stump. A ball, not a wicket. And that's going to do it for the 18th over. 123 for the loss of seven. 10 required from the last two. He's so soft-spoken. Oh, yeah. Everyone says he's so good-looking. And he never forgets to call. I'm uh, born for your true self. The 2022 Tundra. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to Church Street Park here. 10 required from the last 12 is heating up under the lights at Church Street Park. Not something you see often throughout the USA. Lights and cricket. And that's something you have the luxury of seeing. It's Najef Shah into Dane Pete, the battle of the two skippers. A little bit of room outside the off stump. Thick outside as the kids are screaming. It's going to be one and it's going to be Vivek back on strike. But it is the single. But again, now Vivek Nadarayan has to deal with Najaf Shah. If that could have escaped and squirted it away for four, oh imagine my. the amount of ecstasy you would have. We would have heard some the screaming Raptors. over here, I think. We well, you heard, heard, you, you heard a little bit of it. You heard a little bit of it already. Yeah. But now, Vivek Nadarayan, can you find a way to get a single? It's nine off 11. The wiggle room is basically gone. You've got to keep getting the singles. Again, it's just been hard because you've kept it so tight. He's been bowling Yorker length. There's not much you can do here. Does he try to come down a little bit? Maybe just create a little bit of room for himself. Never easy. And again, it's just a perfect length from Najaf Shah. Not much you can do. He's just trying to put his bore off of. Takes high class. Ask Saith Deja Mukamala how much class it took to squirt that last boundary away. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, whew. Nine runs needed now. Ten balls left. And talk about the redemption story for Najaf Shah. He's trying to right the wrong from last week. Remember. Right. Three needed from the last ball, gives up a four down to fine leg. Right. Today, he's defending nine from 11, trying to make sure that this day game does not go in the favor of the Morsel Raptors. Here we go, Nadarayan again on strike. Not able to put bat on ball. It's outside the off stump. He's just struggled with it. Again, if you're Dame Pete, maybe you just tell him if there's any width, just look to paddle it down. Got to get the bat on the ball right now, I think. You know, make something happen. This is heating up nine from nine. No more wiggle room for the Raptors. It's a run of ball. It's Vivek Narayan under pressure. Hasn't really seen the bat all season long. Didn't bat in the match against Fort Lauderdale, but somehow has got to find a way to get bat on ball. I want to see him. I want to see him hit a six, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Morse Raptors fans will take just a single, Nate. I'm not sure they want, they need, and Smart. they do survive. Smart. Smart. They Smart were going to take there. off either way. They're they're they off were going to. Take the risk. They're able to get there just in time. Great they job. get a single. Eight from eight. More importantly, Dane Pete on strike for the last two deliveries. So you've got two more here from Najaf, and then six to come. Likely lead. Sorry. Well, lead would have to be the one to bowl. He's only bowl the left with the overs. So here we go. Najaf shot. Going to Dane Pete. Again, Dane Pete, he's lying with width. So if you're Najaf, 
You ball full, you ball straight, you ball on his legs, let him score from there. Again, Dane Pete's got to be expecting the Yorker at some point. There it is, but it's just outside the off stump. He squirted it through. They're looking for two. You can hear the screens for two. They're looking for two, and they get two in the end. And the cheers are roaring. You can hear the kids behind me. They're loving it. And again, Church Street Park, any width, just squirts it through. Right, you have to put the bat on the ball, especially at this situation. You've, you've got you've got gaps. Be so perceptive, saying, they're, they're, they're so perceptive. Like, I, they they need single. to replace us in the box, man. You know, because I they know I was joking about the six. <laughs> <laughs> like they're so perceptive, they come here and say all he needs is a single. Absolutely, single. all Dane Pete needs to do is get a single off this final delivery, retain strike yep. for the next over, That's and what keep we want. it five from six. If that can happen, the Raptors they'd be in an advantageous position. Najib Shah could change all that though. Do it for 19 overs, and it's all going to come down to the last over. Five needed. Six balls to be bowled and Dane Pete on strike, two wickets in hand. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back for the last over. So welcome back to Church Street Park. It's always Church Street Park, Nate, where we have these exciting finishes. Last year, four needed off the final over. You can't miss a game here. We, we've seen the Atlanta Butterbeers come here when they were a team in the exhibition, and oh, you had the season. short. Oh. Everything happens at Church Street Park. Here's the situation. It always Five comes runs. down to the like, and it's the bowling. Always oh, bowled a beautiful Yorker first up. That was great, ball. great work from the bowler and great, equally great work from Dane Pete to dig that one out because he's easily been deceptive by the slower ball. It dipped on him. Yeah. I think at first he wanted to clear and swing and realized it late. Put Karimula. He's bowled pretty decently today. Again, he's only given up 19 runs and three overs. Can he keep five from coming on the board? It's wide. It's full. He's placed it down the ground. It should just be one. They're going to push for two. And there's a little bit of a stumble. The two batsmen run into each other. You saw definitely not out, but I don't know if anyone caught it in the commotion. Dane oh Pete and Vivek goodness. Narayan, they run into each other on the way. And if the throw had come to the bowler's end, Narayan would have been gone because of the collision. Gone. And honestly, this way, you, you can't run into him. What a shame there from Vivek. And you can see Dane Pete on the ground. And is there some kind of injury going on here with him? Let's he's, hope not. He's wanting some water, and again, I think maybe just got the wind knocked out of him because of that collision. I think so. Again, it was pretty violent. <laughs> Both were looking at the ball. You can see Dane kind of looking back. You can see Vivek looking at it, and then they just collide. Again, had the throw been to the bowler's end, he would have been gone. But they try to go to the bat. It's probably the right decision yeah. just because you want to get Dane out. No point in really trying to get well, Vivek out. We, we didn't see Dane's face there. We saw Vivex. He was smiling and laughing. So that's a good sign for as far as Dane's health goes. I don't think you're going to smile in the face of a hurt captain. Well, always a good sign. Three runs, four balls. Here we go. That two turns things back around. It's drama here at Church Street Park. Can Curry Mullah do something special? Dane Pete gets with again. He's dug it out, but just to the man. This is Chris stressful. Gale. Chris, Chris Gale. Gale. Chris three, Gale. 3-3-3. Three, three, three. It's all over the board now. There's so much stress. You can hear every. You can, you can just feel the suspense in the air right now, Nate. I think you could cut this place with a bu I think I'm pinching my chair in half right now. What an exciting start to minor league cricket here at Church Street Park. Can Dane Pete get it done? He steps across. He's been giving himself no room. Chance of a run out. Oh, he's missed the stumps. Can they get one on an overthrow? No. Good back up. Well backed up. But here's the interesting thing. You need two from two, and it's Vivek Narayan who has struggled all day all to put day bat long. on ball. Now, that given, that was against Nad, uh, Najib Shah, and it's right. never easy to play yes, Najib true, Shah. True, Can he play he has Walid Karimullah? He has played all around the ball so far. Um, you know, maybe I'm being a little harsh on him. He's only seen five balls, but he has played all around, played all around the ball. And this is where you bring up kind of like the future of cricket. We saw 
a strategic retirement last week. No, this is unspeakable, right? You know, would you do that? In this, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> It'd be terrible for the for the ki- for the kids. Uh, you know, uh, confidence from here on out. But, but at this particular point, I wouldn't do it. But we did see a strategic last, last week. Remember? Yeah. I have no problem with it. In, yeah. term, in terms of, in theory, I have no problem with it at all. But, uh, uh, you know, you got you to gotta back if you're the captain right now. You got to say, hey, just put the bat on the ball and we'll make it happen. And I'm interested to see if Dane is taking off right away. They're running this one all the way through. They well, and that opens up the man cape option, too. Right. You don't know. Again, Dane has his helmet off, so I don't think he's going to take off here, but maybe that's an option. It's a full toss. He's got onto it. They're able to sneak away one. They get it. Overthrows. No, the keeper does well to keep any from overthrows. It yes. is going crazy. Again, you need two from two now. Over cover sure. against the Fort Lauderdale Lions in the final over. Right, and the the only thing that New Jersey can, can really hope for right now is a, is a tie game. So uh, they they won't they won't like it, but they like it like it at this point. They'll have to like it. Whereas Morrisville, having suffered a rain out last week, oof, and then losing a close game. And we're having a long break here. Absolutely went bananas. But you can see, yeah, I like this from Umedas. If he's been in this position a lot, he's, he's just telling him to calm down. He just put his hand relax, on his shoulder, said it's, it's all right, buddy. All right. This is just what's gonna happen. Yep. Najib station. Yeah. Maybe slowing this thing down. If you're the umpire, maybe you have to say you got to break this. Like, look, man. No matter what point. happens, we're gonna go back to Bobbers. We're gonna have some good food <laughs> after this. It's Curry Mullah with the ball in hand. Again, at the match, finishes in a with the dot ball. We have a tie. Can we see a run? Oh, and he's gone with the, the bluff. The bluff. <laughs> and Dane Pete is upset. Dane Pete is upset, and the Morrisville <laughs> crowd is a little bit upset. They had this long conversation. Dane Pete's got the hand on the hip, and he just takes a little bit of slow run up. And again, you can hear the chants, let's go Raptors. Nate, this is it. This is how, this is what we want in cricket. One off right. one. Mm-hmm. Can Dane Pete get it done? Galimula runs in. Bat on ball, and he's done it. Yes. The Morrisville Raptors, they get it done with the four. Dane Pete, he walks off in style with the fist bump. He got a smile on his face. He does a little rock a baby. And there it is, the Morrisville Raptors. They win their home opener against the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. And is that man the captain? who's taking catches, taking wickets, and now scoring winning runs. The Morrisville so Raptors, they walk off with a big win. The Somerset Cavaliers, another heartbreaking loss. What a game. This is just the appetizer, too. This is the very first game of the season at Church Street Park, and we had a heck of a game here. A cracker, as they say, went down to the final ball. What an awesome game. Unbelievable game there, an unbelievable finish once again. Run through the scorecard for a moment. Lehiru Melanta, the highest score of 42 from 34, but it was a start from Najif Shah. Two terrific wickets early on. The first over, Rohan Fudke gone for a duck. Chinmay gone for a duck. Obis Panar comes in. He scores 21 before being undone by Damian Jacobs. You have Sanjay Stanley, who was undone as well. He scored 22, played well. Vinod Kumar gets out quickly. Then you see Colin Archibald hit around a little bit, 19. Bowling, fantastic game for, me, for man of the match, or player of the match. Excellent job from Dane. That's what he was brought here for. He was brought here to be a guiding hand for the team, and he guided him all the way across the finish line today. A lovely win for the Morrisville Raptors. A much-needed win, but a heartbreaking finish for the Somerset Cavaliers. They're better than the record will tell you. They're 0-3 now, but again, they've played two. But is loving it, and like you said, just the appetizer to an incredible weekend in minor league cricket. Nate, I want to thank you so much, Bob or Bye, and all the production team we've done. I had a great job here, our cameraman, all the volunteers who made today possible. The Young Patel signing off here for the 2022 Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship presented by Sunoco. Catch us back here tomorrow where we have two matches taking place. The Raptors will be featuring in one of those as well. Thank you guys so much. The Raptors, they win, and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Listen, my last boys to do that. No, no, it's okay. We're good. I'm going to put the rock. Outside edge and again finding the You want this from him early in the season. This time comes down and he's gone. One too many for Lehiru and Damian Jacobs. He's off to the races. Mark, as we head into the second half of the match, the new man in the middle is going to be Jin, excuse me, it's going to be Vinod Kumar. The game it seems to take away. Oh, big appeal, no, no, big, no, appeal no, big appeal, big was... appeal. I think maybe pitching outside leg and you can I see him so. smile. Ken pitched up. This one hits straight back. Is there a fielder out there? Yeah. He's picked the man on the deep. No mistake made from the PSL player, Umay Dasif. He makes it look easy. And Jacobs, the third.
Again, full straight on the legs, work around the corner. They're going to push two. They are going to do two. Will Archibald get back in time? It's going to be close. I think the battle was done. Last ball here at Church Street Park. Gap, and it's going to be, I think, pulled away for four. I think he's... Here we go. Asif runs back in again on the body, and he's cleaned him up. Sanjay going for the big drive down the ground. With this angle. He's gone short. He's invoked the top edge. Will the fielder settle underneath it? Settling and makes it look... Oh, it. He dropped. Again, full. Again, oh, straight. But this one's worked through dropped. covers. It's through the gap. Oh, and it's going to be safe for the park. Can Dane P get it done? He steps across. He's been giving himself no room. Chance of a run out. Oh, he's missed a stump. Does a little rock a baby. And there it is. The Morseville Raptors. They win their home opener against the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. And is that man the captain? who's taking catches, taking wickets, and now scoring winning runs. The Morrisville Raptors, they walk off with a big win. The Somerset Cavaliers, another heartbreaking loss. What a game. This is just... You're watching the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship, presented by Sunoco.